Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I was just reading your comments. Yes, of course, I got the time mixed up, didn't I? I thought, actually, uh, I did put it back an hour and uh, I didn't realise the time. I thought I had another 20 minutes, so luckily I've just looked on here. <laughs> and <laughs> there you go. Anyway, never mind. I'm here now, I'm here now. So it's so nice that you're all concerned about me again. I'm not. I'm getting worse at this, aren't I, with the times? Um, anyway, never mind. I'm here. I'm here. So um, let me just say hello to those of you who've been patient enough to be waiting. I'm so sorry again. I'm so sorry again. Right, let me get my other computer sorted out. So I'm not organised. I haven't got a cup of tea. I haven't got anything. I had a nap. Uh, I woke up too late thinking I had loads of time and I didn't. And uh, anyway, here I am, here I am. So it's nice to see you've all been chatting between yourselves. At least you can have a chat to each other when you're waiting for me, which is nice. Oh, gosh. It's awful when I have a nap. I don't know what's worse when I have a nap or when I don't. I have a nap, I wake up all groggy, or I don't have a nap, and then um, I'm too tired. Gosh, no mind. I think the time, I know it's only an hour difference, but um, it makes a difference. Anyway, never mind. Right, so now I'm just getting my other computer set up. So that I can uh, mirror the live, so I can see what you're saying when I go on to videos, etc. So let's say hello to everyone. Yes, I am good. I'm really good. Just a bit groggy because I've not been. Siestas are good, but I've got to wake up first. Oh, Lord, God, you're all there. Hi, Chumba. And DMV thought she was going to miss it because she was going swimming, but as it happened, she was back before me. Hi, Desi. Yeah. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Bridget. Hi, David. Hi, Jojo. I feel most late, yeah. I know. Oh, I hate being late as well. Hi, Angela. Angela, I agree with you. And I know it's an unpopular opinion, but do you know what? You've got to say what you think. And anyway, we're all going to... Um, we're all going to have a chat about it. And, it, yeah, sometimes it's hard to say an unpopular opinion because there is the court of, uh, of public opinion. And sometimes, you know, it's like with the Peter Folding thing, you know, if you don't, if you, I personally think Peter Folding has behaved terribly. And then saying that when I said that, uh, last year, a lot of people, you know, they don't like it because they, popular opinion i think a lot of people now realize that peter folding's not maybe the person he he made himself out to be but anyway we all have our opinions <laughs> yeah i've got my way out of the handcuffs david i found my way out of the handcuffs <laughs> hi jojo i think I, I can't remember now if i said hello to jojo or not <laughs> good job i've got a spare key david that's all i can say Oh, 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 oh. Hi, Ocean. Uh, hi, Charlie. <laughs> oh, dear me. I know, I know, I know. My, mia culpa. Uh, sorry, I'm just going through to saying hello, just making sure I miss everyone. But of course, everyone's chatting now. Oh, oh, it's so nice to see everybody was worried about me. Hi, Bridget. <laughs> Ocean's falling asleep. You've got you can't fall asleep, Ocean, because I'm here now. You're not allowed to fall asleep now. Right, I think I have said hello to everyone. Yeah. Right, so let's just recap this case of uh, Sebastian. Um, oh, I mean, 
it's an awful case, isn't it? And it seems to get more and more mysterious all the time, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't get clearer. It gets more and more confusing. You know, most cases, you know, we cover cases that maybe take a little while, you know, like Samantha Murphy, it was a little while before the guy was arrested. And I know they still haven't found her, but the police know what's happened to her uh according to them anyway you know most cases eventually it might take a little while but eventually some evidence comes up doesn't it and um you know one way or another it might not be solved even to our to our satisfaction but this case it's, it literally is like Sebastian disappeared into fresh air because there seems to be no evidence of anything and, you know, Sebastian, 15-year-old boy, uh, let me put this article up just, just to give us the background of it. I know most of you already know the background. Um, but, you know, we can never assume knowledge. There'll be people out there maybe don't know anything about it watching this. So here he is, Sebastian, 15 years old. High functioning autism, is he has, supposedly. Now, of course, again, we don't know. Uh, we don't know Sebastian. We don't know, you know, he, what he's like in his everyday sort of life. We only know what he's, either his mum and his stepfather says about him or what his father, Seth, says about him. And uh, the other thing that seems strange to me in this day and age, unless there are, uh, they do exist, but they just haven't been released. But where are the videos of Sebastian? You know, most most people these days, they make little short videos of their kids, don't they? Or, I mean, I know at his age, maybe he wouldn't want videos being made of him. But maybe he would make his own videos, you know, or... I don't know, there's something missing in this case for me. There's something that's not quite right. And we get these conflicting sort of reports now. I think the problem, the, the, the pure animosity between uh, his biological mum and his biological dad is evident, isn't it? You know, Katie Proudfoot and uh, Chris Proudf Proudfoot are sort of in one camp. And then you've got Seth in the other camp, Seth Rogers. And there's they, it, as time has gone on, the animosity between them has intensified, you know. And but I've got to say, and this is one hundred percent how I feel, the animosity or the accusations all come from Seth. You know, it's like uh, Seth has become increasingly. Uh, in my opinion, is become increasingly, uh, what's the word, uh, condemning of Katie and Chris. Now, from what we can see that before um, this happened, I think him, there was no, there's not any love lost between him and Katie, but it seemed, it seems that he had quite a good relationship with Chris Proudfoot. You know, they were supposed to be more friendly than he and uh, Katie. You know, any uh, conflabs about Sebastian were done between him and Chris. You know, there's obviously this animosity between him and Katie for whatever reason. And you know what, he's probably 50-50. I, I don't believe that Katie's all the bad one and Seth's all the good one. You know, I don't believe that. Um, I think there's, and especially as time's gone on, I'm really concerned about uh, the way uh, Seth has conducted himself. Now, it may be just that, you know, he has, uh, he's having some sort of a, you know, obviously it's horrible. His son's disappeared while he was in the care of his ex-wife. So if you look at it from that angle, you know, it's very difficult for Seth. But his behaviour since Sebastian disappeared, in my eyes, has become increasingly bizarre. And if I was concerned about anyone's behaviour, 
it's his. But there may be a good reason for it. Maybe that is, uh, you know, people say that the meds that he's on, maybe that is like, you know, having some sort of a nervous breakdown at the end of the day, his son's missing. Um, but there's a lot of things that I'm not happy with about his behaviour. Honestly, I'm just not. And if anyone's behaviour, like Angela just said there in the chat, if anyone's behaviour causes me concern out of the people involved in this, it is him more than even Katie and more than even Chris. Uh, because, and I do, you know, Chris and Katie have been literally reviled, dragged through the hedges, uh, criticised, um, found guilty in the court of public opinion. And there really is no evidence that they've done anything wrong. No evidence whatsoever, you know, and... The police don't seem to think they've done anything wrong, at least so far. I mean, you know, this sort of thing can change, can't it? There could be more evidence that comes out uh, further along the line. But as far as we know, so why is it? Why is everybody, you know, uh, I know Chris maybe is a bit sketchy because he's been married five times. They're talking about historic abuse. Uh, you know, arguments with his wives, his wives have spoken out against him. But none of that that's been said about him means that he's, he's you know, done any harm to Sebastian. We don't know that he has. So just having some water. Also, I just want to make it clear, I'm not saying that he hasn't. May well be that Chris Proudfoot has done something. When I first started looking at this case, so let's just talk about the case. I was supposed to be giving a background to the case. This this search of this landfill has always concerned me because the police don't undertake searches like this unless they've got a reason. You know, this is massive to search a landfill. It's a massive search. Now, they did not find anything, but I still have got my concerns about this apparently sebastian liked to hide did sebastian hide in the bin and get taken off you know unfortunately did he but anyway would they have found him you'd hope that then they would have found some trace of him when they searched the landfill anyway it always concerns me that but the morning Sebastian Rogers went missing from his Tennessee home, it started out as a normal day, his mother recalled. But when Katie went to wake her 15-year-old son up for school on the morning of 26th of February, so it's a long time ago now, we're now on the 14th of April, his bed was empty and he was nowhere to be found. So Sebastian, who has high functional autism, is described by his mother as being very smart and not a mischievous child by any means. So, I mean, there's been all sorts of... They were out, the police were out pretty much straight away. We l listened to the first uh, eight hours or 11 hours or whatever of the search. The police were trying really hard to find Sebastian. And they did find footprints. So I'm still thinking about those footprints that as we listen to the um, uh, the video of the first sort of few hours of Sebastian going missing, there was talk about footprints being found. So he supposedly disappeared without his shoes, hasn't he? Which seems, again, seems to people very unusual that someone would disappear without their shoes, especially an autistic boy. I mean, you know that people who have autism, everything has to be right, doesn't it? Uh, everything has to be just right. Would he have disappeared without his shoes? Anyway, uh, so yeah, state and local authorities searched for Sebastian for more than a week using helicopters, drones, search and rescue dogs and teams on foot. And after the search was scaled back, a new search effort led investigators across state lines to a Kentucky landfill. I still worry about that landfill, you know, and I don't want to think that Sebastian has ended up there, but just, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, he's not been seen in person or on camera since this disappearance. Um, and then it was Monday, the 4th of March, the first time that they spoke to the media, uh, 
Katie and stepfather Chris Proudfoot. Um, Katie says, insists they went to bed at their home in Hendersonville the night before he, uh, he vanished, but when she woke up on the 26th of February for school, he was gone. That's what she says. She found her son's bed empty. Now, when I first taught, heard about this story, the first thing I thought was, well, the mother's done something to him. You know, there's been an argument and she's lost her temper. And then she's called her husband. Uh, that's what I felt in the beginning, that maybe something had happened and she had done something to him. <laughs> but I never thought that it was Chris, because Chris, don't forget, the police have... You know, everyone keeps saying, oh, well, no, Chris, maybe wasn't at work and this. But the, do you think the police will have looked into whether Chris was at work or not? And if they've proven that he was at work, um, you know, they've proven that he's at work. Why are the police not looking at Chris? Or maybe they are looking at him, but they're just, you know, they just haven't got enough evidence. Now, I want to make it clear, I'm not saying necessarily that Seth did anything to Sebastian. I'm just saying I think Seth's behaviour has been very bizarre and there could be reasons for that. There could be reasons for that. But I started watching all the uh, videos again. Because Seth, he's been interviewed left, right and centre on social media. Where's his family liaison officer? Who is looking after, who is, stop, he shouldn't be doing all these interviews with YouTubers uh, because he's making interview after interview, phoning up these uh, channels or appearing on all these different channels. And to be honest, acting very bizarre. I think he's acting very bizarrely. And I don't think the YouTubers, uh, you know, he should have been looked after more by the police um, you know, normally in, in, in the UK, one good thing that they do in UK, in, or they're supposed to do anyway, they don't always do it very well, is they appoint a family liaison officer, don't they? And that family liaison officer is, suppo officer is supposed to control uh, or help to, to advise them on when to speak to the media, when not speak to speak to me, the media. This was a problem in the Nicola Bully case that was found at the the uh, when the commissioner police commissioner review uh, thing came out that the family liaison officer had not advised you know Paul properly Paul Ansell that he those interviews that he gave he should never have given. So this is how I feel with Seth. I think Seth should not be giving these interviews. He's just like a loose cannon at the moment, going off every interview that I see. I think he acts really bizarrely. Sometimes he sounds like he's he's on he's either drunk or he's on some medication. He's slurring his words. He's, in the end, so it started off like the YouTubers, uh, you know, fighting to speak to him, you know, because obviously it probably makes good uh, viewing to get the uh, set on your channel but then in the end it feels to me some of the ones that i've seen lately it's like they're trying to get rid of him they can't get him off the channel you know it's like the opposite so who's looking after him why is he not being advised and this uh this thing about the uh, lie detector test so i don't know if you know but he was on um he appeared, well, Chris and Katie appeared on Nancy Grace and they offered to do a lie detector test, didn't they? So Nancy, because, uh, so Katie has done a lie detector test and passed it, a police lie detector test. So on the Nancy Grace uh, YouTube channel, she said to Chris Proudfoot, if I got a lie detector test organised for you, would you take it? And he said, yes, I would take it. Anyway, she says that she went to all, you know, different lengths to organise this uh, lie detector test. And in the end, he refused. Well, he said he couldn't do it because the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation had said, had advised him against it. And, you know, I think maybe that's probably true. Because you can imagine he's he's been on there and he said, oh, yeah. Then afterwards, he's probably spoken. I mean, I wouldn't do one. 
I've got to be honest, if that was my son, even if I was innocent, I don't think I'd do one unless the police made me do one. Because I've been, I, I, you know, lie detector tests, they don't mean, you know, they're not 100%. They can't be admitted in court. And, uh, you know, what, uh, or whether or not Chris and Katie Proudfoot have done anything to Sebastian, um, there's definitely strange circumstances there, isn't there? I mean, at the end of the day, they're home. There's something, there's something strange about the whole situation. So I'd be very nervous about doing a lie, te a, a lie detector test, even if I'd done anything or not. Anyway, he, he agreed to it, but obviously he's probably then, they've talked about it afterwards, he's probably gone to the Tennessee Bureau. I can just imagine him saying to them, oh, you know, I'm thinking of doing a lie detector test on Nancy Grace, and they'll be like, no, you know, don't do that, because uh, there'll be reasons why they've told him not to do it. Now, you could either believe it or not. Uh, maybe the police haven't told him not to take the test. Some people don't think they have, but... Wouldn't the police come out and say something? Or are the police... Then there's another part of me that thinks, are the police just sitting back, just watching all this going on and letting somebody hang themselves, if you like, you know, uh, letting them sort of chunner on and uh, see what comes out of it? Now, I'm not saying that Seth is guilty of necessarily doing anything to Sebastian because he was supposedly at work at the time as well. But we just don't know what's happened. This boy has disappeared. And uh, I can't see why Katie and um, Chris would have done anything to him. Because what, the other thing you've got to remember is he was going to live with Seth anyway, apparently. You know, it was supposedly all organised, wasn't it? Seth said he'd already found a school for Sebastian. Sebastian was going to live with him. So... Even if Katie and Chris did not want Sebastian with them anymore, well, he was going soon anyway. Surely they could have hung on a week or something or however long it was going to be before he went. You know, and if they did do something to Sebastian, why is there no um, CCTV of Chris... Do you think the police won't have examined Chris Proudfoot's movements? He couldn't have come back to the house without some CCTV footage of his car being seen somewhere. You know, it just it just could it's impossible that he could have come back before he said whenever it was he said he'd come back. How could he have done that without the police having any CCTV of it? That that would be my question. Anyway, I'm just going to come back to the chat and see what you all think. I know most people, you know, uh, a lot of people are anti um, Chris and Katie, and I do understand that, but it's just the more, it's funny because the more I watch about this case, the less I think that Katie and Chris are guilty of anything. And the more I think, well, Seth seems to be acting so bizarrely hi rio hi tracy i might have said hello to tracy i'm not sure <laughs> but like you say ocean it, this is a real this is a case you can what the thing is a lot of the channels honest to god some of them i watch them and i just think you know it's terrible they're sort of like just literally making things up or just you know jumping on nothing and uh accusing it may be that Chris and Katie are guilty, but, you know, you cannot just, you know, accuse people of things without any um, without any proof, can you? Hi, Pauline. You know, and, we, you know, you've got to think, you've got to think that the police are... Oh, Rio, are you okay? What's wrong with Rio? Now, the other thing you've got to think about as well is any of you out there who've had, either got or had 15-year-old boys, autistic or not, uh, they're not the easiest 
of children you know like it's not the easiest time in your role as a parent is it you know it's really difficult and they rebel of course they do that's like natural part of life and then children who have got another parent you know every time I, and and the thing is the only person as well who's given away all uh, all of uh sebastian's private information it makes my skin crawl when seth is on there talking about uh sebastian's you know about the essay uh he suffered from the older boy uh about the fact you know of going to the toilet he needs pull-ups or this that how awful to it's him who's saying all this to the world Nobody needs to know about that. Nobody needs to know about um, Seth's, uh, about Sebastian's private things. Could you imagine if Sebastian is, hopefully, as hopefully he is, alive somewhere? Could you imagine him watching these YouTube channels and seeing his dad on there it, talking about all these personal, uh, you know, very personal things, you know, that he wears pull-ups, that he's suffered SA. There was another thing that he's supposed to have made some inappropriate comments to some guy in the bathroom, you know, in, in, a, in a toilet about his uh, appendage and things. All this uh, Seth should not be saying. He really should not be saying because that is not uh, a nice thing to say about Sebastian. And if Sebastian was watching that or if Sebastian comes back from wherever he is, because... The, there's still a possibility, I think, that it might be hiding somewhere. Now, notice with the mother, Katie, quite often, she's still saying to people, please, look in all your spaces, like your garages, your because Sebastian liked to hide, and he might have hidden somewhere. I, I do think maybe that night there may have been an argument, and he may have ran off for a reason maybe he knew he was in trouble because of something that he'd done and he ran away for that reason uh, and then he's hidden somewhere and maybe he's got stuck somewhere or maybe he's got taken off by somebody you know we just don't know what happened to him but if he is still alive as we all hope he is i just i just think that poor boy uh seeing all these things that his dad is telling the world and i mean the world because you know there's thousands of people interested in this story thousands and thousands of people watching updates on this story uh and now they all we all know we all know about sebastian's uh embarrassing things in his past or in his present we we all know he's a 15 year old boy be mortified my son at 15 even now to be honest would be mortified if i even put his photo on here never mind if uh, i was telling all his personal uh, problems and things that he'd you know problems that he's had for, he'd had for whatever reason you know without his permission I, I i don't like the way seth talks about sebastian i honestly do not like it i also don't like the way that he's on all these youtube channels he's got his cash apps up there and i know he needs money for the search and he's searching for sebastian he's doing these searches putting flyers out and stuff i know that he, he will need money for that but uh it's just i don't know there's just something I can't, I can't explain it. It just feels uncomfortable to me. And I don't want to criticise him because he obviously is going through a lot looking for his son and being out of control with it all. But there's just something. Anyway, I we're going to have a look. Uh, hi, hi, blank faces. Uh, hi, Matthew. Let me just say hello to him. And hi, everyone at home. Yeah, blank faces. It reminds me a bit of Andrew Godson. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say. So Katie and Chris said he doesn't have because uh, when he, they were being interviewed uh, by Olivia, uh, the Chronicles of Olivia, uh, I think it was that interview, and they were being asked about his uh, social media. 
and they, they said he hasn't got any social you know he's not allowed social media now when he goes to his dad's his dad said seth said oh he comes to my house and he's got more freedom now any of you that are out there that have got you know the primary custody of children uh you know how irritating it is when they go off to their dads or their mums whichever way around it is and then suddenly they can do all the things that you won't let them do so they think it's great don't they of course they don't want to live at your house because you're putting down rules for them because you have to cope with them day in day out you have to cope especially if they've got behavior issues like autism etc you have to cope with them day in day out you have to lay the ground rules you have to you know do whatever's necessary to care for that child and then off they go to their other parents and they just let them do what the hell they want and all the rules that you've got for them for what for reasons probably the re the reason you've got rules for them there will be reasons um they just forget the rules and just let them do what they want so then these children they come back to your house and it's like, oh, well, my dad lets me do that or my mum lets me do that or why won't you let me do that? Or, you know, we went here and why don't you ever take me there? And why don't, you know, I could just do I, I luckily never had that. That was one problem that I didn't have because, uh, you know, uh, my son's dad wasn't in the picture. But that is a problem that uh, people have when they're sharing custody or even sometimes they're not sharing custody. The children just go off for one day here and there or one weekend here and there and then they come back and it's all you know you think god uh i've seen it happen with my friends you think it's you don't want them to lose touch with their other parent but sometimes you think god you know it causes so many problems uh when they go off to see the other parents sometimes because obviously that parent they've only got them for a weekend here and there or a day here and there so they yeah they can they can spend time with them they can spend money on them they can uh, let them do whatever they want so apparently at seth's house he did have internet so for those of you who don't know about the case of andrew gosden uh he was a young boy similar age i think to sebastian who disappeared one day from his home no red flags with andrew at all he just disappeared from his home. He, he, he got up one morning as if he was going to school. When his parents went to work, he went back home, changed into normal clothes. He went off on the train to London. And the last CCTV sighting of him is him getting off the train. And you, I, I don't know about you, Blank Faces, if you have seen the videos, etc., and the CCTV. To me, that boy, as he, I've just got a chill as I'm saying it, because as he got off that train in London, he looked to me that he was looking for someone. You know, it looked like, you know, you get, you come out of the station and you're looking for whoever's supposed to be there to meet you. That's what it looked like to me with Andrew Gosden, that he went there to meet somebody. Uh, anyway, he's never been found. This was years ago, years ago, and he's never been heard of since. He's never been found. Nobody knows what happened to him. Now, of course, it was from days when there wasn't uh, social media like there is today. Um, I'm sure the police maybe know more information, but, you know, it's not really come out whether he was talking to anyone on the internet or, uh, you know, it's not really need to look at another case to add to the list because it's a very famous missing persons case in the UK because it's unusual for a 15-year-old boy to just disappear into the ether. And Andrew did. He did disappear. So had he been talking to someone on the internet and he arranged to meet them in London, you know, he took his phone with him, I think, but he didn't take his charger or something like that. It was, it was just a really, really odd case. In fact, we might have a little quick look at it because uh, it's interesting and it does resonate. Yeah, Desi's, well, Desi, that's right. Your son's autistic and he wouldn't go out without shoes on at all. So that is strange about uh, Sebastian going out with his, without his shoes. Very odd. But anyway, let me just have a look at Andrew Gosden to just read you quickly the story because he 
uh, the, the details of the story because it does have a, you know, did Sebastian, if he was allowed to go on the internet at his dad's, when he wasn't allowed to go on social media at his mum's, but had he, I don't know, had he arranged to meet someone, did somebody know where he lived? Or has he ran off after an argument with his mum and then, um, you know, some some unfortunate, some things happen to him. You know, either someone's just took opportunistic, saw him, you know, running around with no shoes on and, uh, you know, hiding or whatever for whatever reason, maybe thought he was going to get into trouble. Uh, as someone took that opportunity to sort of whisk him away, offer him a lift. I mean, it wouldn't be difficult, would it, you know, to see him and someone stop and say to him, oh, are you OK? You know, I'll, I'll give you a lift if you want. Where do you want to go? Maybe he said he wanted to go to his dad's. And then this person, whoever it is, possibly has picked him up, taking him off to his dad's. Well, it said he would take him to his dad's and then whisked him off never to be seen again. That's another possibility. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. So, yeah, this, uh, so Andrew Paul God, Gosden, so he's born in 1993. So if he was, if he was still alive today, he would be uh, three years younger than my son. So he'd still only be 24 now. He was 14 when he disappeared. And he disappeared from central London on the 14th of September. So where did he go to on the train? Because, I, yeah, he went to... King's Cross Station. Well, we all know about King's Cross Station in London. It, for anybody who doesn't know, King's Cross Station uh, is famous for prostitution, etc. And there's a lot of rent boys. Uh, I'm not saying that's what happened to Andrew. I don't know. You know, I don't know that, obviously. But what I'm trying to say is it's a possibility. So, yeah. So here he is when he disappeared, just a 14-year-old boy. And this is an age-enhanced photo of him. Uh, so he left his home in Doncaster. So that's right. I didn't think he was in London to start with. He was living in Doncaster, South Yorkshire. He would withdrew £200 from his bank account. God, I wish... It, uh, I don't know. When I was 14, I never had £200 in my bank account. But anyway, he did. And he bought a one-way ticket, a one-way ticket. Now, that's strange, isn't it, in itself? So he obviously wasn't planning to come back. He bought a one-way ticket to London from Doncaster Station. And he was last seen on CCTV really? leaving King's Cross Station. And he has he whatever happened to him or why he travelled to London that day has never been established. Now, I didn't know this. Did you know this, Blank Faces, that in December 2021, detectives investing, investigating the case arrested two men on suspicion of kidnap and human trafficking in relation to Gosden's disappearance, uh, to Andrew's disappearance. Both men were subsequently released under investigation. Ah, and then in September 2023, police confirmed they'd been eliminated from the investigation. So, seems like the police are still investigating at least, but Andrew's parents, you know, do not know what happened to him. Uh, he was apparently a gifted student. Uh, you know, he, he said little about his school life to his parents. You know, he, he was just a normal boy and there didn't seem to be any problems. His parents said he exhibited no signs of depressions, of depression, but they did say he did not really socialise with his friends outside school. Apparently, there was not, no indication he'd been bullied. A uh, shy, quiet young man, mature beyond his years. So what happened to him? What happened to him? Yeah. 
He was interested in video games. So, of course, on video games, you can meet people as well. You know, a lot of children chat on video games, don't they? It's terrifying, really, because, you know, where children are in their bedrooms, especially when they get to, like, teenagers, they spend a lot of time in their bedrooms, don't they? They spend a lot of time in their rooms on video games. You don't know what they're doing, who they're talking to. You do sort of totally, it's very, very difficult because it's very difficult to monitor what they're doing because they get, you know, secretive and they don't want to tell you what they're doing, etc. So, because of the fact that uh, Sebastian, he was allowed to use the internet at sex, it just makes you wonder, had he been talking to someone online? You know, maybe like we think, he, where would he have gone? But maybe there was somewhere he could have gone, somebody he could have contacted. But you think the police would have um, would have a digital trail, and that that is exactly what's so strange about this case, isn't it? Is there is no digital trail whatsoever. They say, well, unless there's things that the police know that we don't. Now the police seem determined, uh, or, or or don't seem to you know, suspect Katie and Chris. Another reason why people are very down on Katie and Chris, apart from Chris's past, you know, which he's got a past of domestic violence and, and stuff like that. Uh, apart from that, like people are not happy with the fact that Katie has left the house, hasn't she? She went, he went back to work, Chris and Katie, she stopped, she was going to school, I think, wasn't she, or working, and she stopped. She's gone to be with Chris. And I know that comes over very strange to people, because you think if your, your child had gone missing, you would not leave the house, would you, in case they turned up back there again? You know, why would you leave the house? But, you know, uh, what they're saying, and I agree, is... Um, they're being hounded They're absolutely being hounded Everybody knows where they live People are turning up there They're calling them names They're, You know, they can't They can't even let people know where they are Because they've got to keep their location secret Because people are You know, and they shouldn't be doing that without proof People should not be accusing them And part of it has been whipped up by social media I personally think, in this case the, you know, some of the uh, YouTube channels I've watched about it, I just think I don't know how they get away with it. It's terrible, uh, you know, absolutely whipping up um, without any evidence. You no, know, it may be that they have done something to Andrew. I don't know if they have or they haven't. But even so, you can't go hounding someone with no evidence. So I just want to have a look at uh, one of uh, a couple of interviews of both of them, like, Uh, Seth's because Seth's ringing into all these channels as well, isn't he? So we look at Seth first, but we're going to look at uh, Katie and uh, Chris as well. Right, who's this one? Let's have a look. Uh, oh no, that's not. That's too short. That one. So it just seems that everyone's all sympathy is with uh, Seth, but I think what we have to remember is Katie is his mother, and if she hasn't done anything to him and she's gone missing, uh, and he's gone missing. It's awful. Imagine being a mother and not only your child's gone missing, but everybody thinks you've done it as well without any proof, without any, you know, there's nothing really. Why is it coming up with Seth Rogan? Right, hang on. So if I wouldn't have had a nap and overslept, I would have had this organised. Okay, let's have a look. So this was talking to court tv and this is where seth says sebastian was supposed to come and live with me so 
my question would be then if he was supposed to go and live with Seth why would Katie and Chris have done anything to him you know he was going anyway apparently February 26th in Hendersonville Tennessee it was a Monday morning Katie Proudfoot says she woke up at about six in the morning to get her son Sebastian ready for school but when she went to his room he wasn't there Katie quickly went around the house and could not find him. Where was Sebastian? Panic quickly set in. Katie says she called police and searched around the neighborhood and at school and could not find him. She says his shoes were still at home. His phone was still there too, but a flashlight was missing. Where did Sebastian go? Did he leave in the middle of the night? Why would he leave? These are all questions that have no answers. Poli Sorry, I just want to say thank you to Devin for joining. Don't forget to all use your emojis, your members' emojis. Please say they don't know where he is. They don't know what happened. All of Sebastian's parents have cooperated. His mother, Katie Proudfoot, his stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, and his dad, Seth Rogers. They also say there's no sign of foul play. But people don't just vanish. Tonight, we speak live with Sebastian's dad. What does he know? What does he suspect? Then we'll also listen to what Sebastian's mom and stepdad have said. Does it all make sense? Tonight, as investigators continue their search, we continue our investigation into the mysterious disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I want to start here because this is the most important part. If you take nothing else away from the next hour of this program, please just remember this face. Okay? If you don't remember anything else, even if you, you change the channel at some point, please remember this face. This child is missing. You may know something. You may have seen something. Investigators need help. His family needs help. Sebastian needs your help. Um, a new search was announced today. A search that seems to be relatively close to the home, but good news, right? Yesterday, we heard uh, from investigators, from uh, the sheriff, FBI, and one day after they addressed the public to kind of give an update on what's going on, now a renewed search that could take a couple of days. That's good news, not great news, it's good news. You've got to keep the search going. You've got to keep his face out there. You've got to keep a spotlight on. Uh, sorry, and I just want to say the police have been very quiet lately. I don't know what's happening search-wise as far as the police are concerned. So of course, Seth is out there organizing searches. Another criticism of Katie and Chris, of course, has been that they're not searching. You know, so there's been a lot of criticism about that. And I've got to say, if that was my son, I think I would be out there searching day in, day out. But, you know, another thing is I don't think they can search because they can't go. Every time they go out, they get threatened. You know, if people realise who they are, there's so many threats, etc. So they can't, you know, whereas Seth, it's like he gets all the support. Everyone's like, oh, you know, helping him and everything, which is great. But uh, if Chris Proudfoot showed his face anywhere or even Katie, that, you know, they wouldn't be helped. They'd be like, you know, uh, attacked, you know. So I don't think they can go out and search. But anyway, you know, we've all got our views on it. But let's just... I'm just going to leave this video running because there's something else I've just got to look for while uh, it's going. Um, what is happening here? Because we don't know what happened. Nobody knows. Well, somebody might know. Somebody but investigators knows. don't know. We don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Which leaves open like any possibility here. So it's good that the search is continuing. More importantly, remember his face. Um, a question, another question people are asking tonight is like, where's mom? Where, where's mom? And we're going to talk about that tonight. And a lot of people have been talking about that. But it's, it's, it's a difficult position for any parent to be in in what has happened here. Now... 
I can tell you where dad is. Dad's going to be here. He's going to be here live on, on this program. Um, and we'll get a lot of information uh, from Seth Rogers uh, when he joins us in, in just a moment. But I want you to listen one more time to the chief deputy from the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, again, describing the status of this investigation, this search for a missing child. There is no evidence to support foul play is involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. But at this point, you don't rule it out? We're not ruling anything out. Not ruling anything out? Because they don't know what happened here. They don't know. I want to bring in our special guest uh, right off the top, uh, Sebastian's dad, Seth Rogers, joining us tonight from Clarksville, Tennessee. Um, Seth, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know this isn't easy. A yes. lot of people are asking you for your time, so we do appreciate it. Um, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Your feed. Just looking for my son. Your feed just froze up for a second. I'm so sorry, Seth. So we, we didn't hear. How are you holding up tonight? I'm just looking for my son. There is no holding up. It's just moving forward. Move forward to the next location. Move forward to the next. Anything that I get, any type of lead, any type of anything. I mean, it's just every day holding on to hope. What are your thoughts about the investigation and the status of the law enforcement investigation into the search for your son where um, they're not ruling anything out, no evidence of foul play? Do you think that they have found anything so far in, in more than a month? I'm not part of the investigation and they don't have to let me know anything, which they don't let me know anything. Fair enough. Um, not letting you know anything is is, is one part. Uh, the other part is... Sorry, and just something I wanted to say that in the last interview I've seen of him, it was when he was interviewed uh, with um, an American YouTuber. He says that the police aren't speaking to him anymore. The police aren't saying anything to him anymore. I think. Do you think the police may be annoyed at him? for going off and talking to all these YouTubers and that. I mean, this is probably one of the most respectable uh, channels he's spoken to. Um, but, do, but having said that, if the police are critical of him and he says the police aren't speaking to him now, why are the police treating him like that? Why don't the police, the police take control of him a bit better? Why don't the police say, assign him a family? Don't you have family liaison officers? If there's anyone out there who's in, in America, let me know because in Britain, the people are assigned uh, family liaison officers. And these family liaison officers are supposed to advise them about how to talk to the press, etc. Or has he just gone off completely random like Maverick uh, talking to everyone? Maybe he was advised not to in the beginning. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of talk in the moment about um, he supposedly has done a lie detector test with Nancy Grace, supposedly. But this lie detector test has not emerged yet. Uh, of course, we're all wait with, with, with bated breath. I mean, I don't know why Seth would take a lie detector test. Uh, he says the police told him he didn't need to take one because it was proven that he was at work at the time. But Nancy Grace has offered him one and supposedly has done one. And according to another YouTuber, he's supposedly fallen asleep several times during the lie detector test. I mean, who falls asleep during the lie detector test? You know, whether you're on medication or you're not on medication, why take a lie detector test and then fall asleep through it? Well, you know, the, the, the person who takes a lie detector test you know, the person who's actually doing the lie detector test surely should be saying to him, sorry, I can't do this if you're on medication or if you, you look like you're going to fall asleep or whatever. That's the problem with a Nancy Grace lie detector test. It's not like a police lie detector test because as much as I quite like uh, Nancy Grace and her channel, at the end of the day, it is a channel. 
is a YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, she it, it's an entertainment channel, really, isn't it? So she's not doing the lie detector test uh, in the same way or for the same reasons that the police are doing it. So, um, you know, I don't know what what sort of rules is she abiding by or is the lie detector people abiding by? You can't take make someone who's on medication where they're falling asleep every five minutes take a lie detector test. How could that be even recommended? You know, so anyway, it all seems to have gone quite as, unless it comes, maybe she's waiting for next week. So of course, it's the weekend. Maybe she's waiting uh, for next week to release the results of this lie detector test. But I think, we're, well, I'm dying to see it, to be honest. But uh, whether we'll ever see it, I don't know. Is You're his dad, right? So has that communication been enough to, to ha have you feel like, okay, I, I know and I trust that they're they're working this thing? I'm in law enforcement myself, so I've got to trust trust the procedure. I got to trust that if, if so, he says he's in law enforcement. What does he do? do? I don't actually know what he does. I'm sure one of you out there will know. What does he do? Is he's not a policeman? Is he? Is he an actual policeman? What does he mean when he says he's in law enforcement himself? Oh, sorry. Everything is followed by the procedure, and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. That there will be a, a positive outcome, and my son will be found. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. They haven't came up with anything. Why they're not asking for higher powers to help? From where? Sorry, and I just want to say this is one of the earlier interviews. And when I watched this, you know, I thought, oh, uh, you know, his poor, poor dad and everything. But just since this, every interview that I've seen, I've started to feel differently about Seth. Um, and, you know, I hope I'm wrong. That I, I'm not saying that he's done anything to Sebastian, but uh, there's just, I just feel sorry for this boy that his private life, you know, that is. You know, we all got angry with uh, sort of Nicola Bully's family, Paul Lancel, etc., when they released those, and the police in Lancashire when they released those details of Nicola's uh, medical records and her struggles with menopause, alcohol, whatever. Uh, we all got angry because none of us, I think we can all, because she was still only missing then, you know, so she could have been watching that and listening to that just as Sebastian could be. I just think it, it just sits so uneasy with me, all this glib sort of revealing all these sort of embarrassing things about Sebastian. I want to go back to when you first found out, and then this part isn't clear in my head. Where were you when, when you found out that Sebastian um, was missing and, and who called you? What was that conversation like? And then sort of what happened next there? Made it out to the parking garage. When I got in my vehicle, I saw I had a missed call and a text message. Christopher Proudfoot. What happened there? Sorry. Text message was nine uh, was a nine one one, so I called immediately, and he's the one that told me that Sebastian was missing. And how much detail did he give you about what happened? And how would you describe that that moment, that call? Wasn't much detail except for Sebastian. Except for he said Katie woke up, Sebastian's missing. So I left the parking garage and headed straight to her house. And and how far are you from the house? About forty five minutes from downtown correction center to their house in Henderson, Sumner County. 
Okay, so now you respond. You're um, on that 45 minute ride there. Um, are you talking to anyone or are you just pedal to the metal trying to get there? No, nah, I'm trying not to get a speeding ticket. I, I get that, but I mean, are you just focused on getting there or are you calling um, yeah. his mom uh, to get more details? No, I'm just focusing on traffic to get there as fast as possible. So now when you got there, um, what happened at that moment? Like, did, did, did you have a conversation with, with, with his mom? And did you guys, did you try to find out, like, well, what the situation was here? When I got there, there was already law enforcement presence there. Um, so I walked in and just started listening to what was going on. And okay, so people are telling me he works in a correction centre. See, he acts very strange as well on the camera. Like, you know, sometimes when he's been interviewed, uh, which presumably these are like Zoom interviews or whatever, sometimes it's like he's almost not really listening to what they're saying or he's watching the TV in the background or just it acts really odd. In my opinion, he acts very strangely. I wanted to hear what was going on. So I got to hear... Her telling law enforcement, law enforcement asking questions, me listening to the questions and listening to the responses from his mother. But no, Bull, nobody's suggesting that Seth has anything to do with his disappearance. I have never not said that at all. What I'm saying is, why is he, you know, at the end of the day, this is it, this is the whole thing. As soon as anybody says anything about Seth, everyone's like, oh, poor Seth, this, that, and the other. But no, but then Seth is throwing accusations out about Katie and about Chris like willy nilly. He, you know, he's just constantly on the on interviews trashing Sebastian's mum and everything. That is what I'm saying is why is it? Uh, there's no evidence that anybody's got anything to do with Sebastian's disappearance. So, you know, I'm not saying that Seth had anything to do with his disappearance. What I'm saying is it just sits uneasy with me, the way he's revealing all these personal details, etc. And what did you, did you form any opinion based upon what you were hearing? knew my son was missing and I just started watching, watching body language, listening to words coming out that I form an opinion. Yeah. I formed an opinion. I am only human. And what was that opinion? That again, once again, my son, Something has happened to my son under her watch. And once again, she wasn't being an adult. Yeah. So something has happened to my son under her watch. He's very down on Katie. I mean, it's not helpful, is it? It's not helpful. Uh, because there is no proof that Katie has done anything to Sebastian. So he straight away, he's whipping up this anti-Katie thing. So, yeah, let's just listen to that again, because when he said that, I thought, well, you know, if you hear snoring, it's not me, it's the dog. The dog's snoring. Then again, once again, my son, something has happened to my son under her watch. And once again, she wasn't being an adult. Something has happened to my son under her watch. And once again, she wasn't being an adult. Now, I don't know what happened in that their relationship, how it broke down. But I think when your son goes missing, I don't think it's helpful to go on uh, TV, etc. Or court TV. This is a, well, it's a YouTube channel, really, even though it's called court TV. Essentially, it's a YouTube cha channel. I don't think it's helpful to go on and say those things, you know, with the best will in the world. I just don't think it's helpful. And this was early on. I think his interviews have got even more condemnatory, really, 
as time's gone on and i just don't think it's helpful when you're supposed to be searching for your son like why i don't because from what i can gather he was quite friendly with chris before all this you know he might moan about chris now but him and chris were friendly she wasn't being a parent taking care of an autistic child Can you hear my dog snoring? That's the big dog. That's the uh, German Shepherd. So as you're listening and watching her, now she was home. It was just Sebastian and his mom that were home at that time? When I got, yes, because when I got there, it was just Katie. And I think his, I think Chris's mom was there. Now, do you just want to go back to what you said, DMV? And I know you said she left him with a known sex offender, but she did make a statement about that, didn't she, on Facebook? That it wasn't, didn't happen the way he makes it out there, it happened. I don't know what the truth is. Honestly, I'm not sticking up for anyone. If anybody, if it turns out that Katie or Chris has done something to Sebastian, there will be no one that's quicker than me to uh, condemn them. All I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, even if he hit him with a belt, which obviously is a terrible thing to do, that doesn't mean to say that he's done something to him now. There's got to be evidence. There's got to be evidence. That That's all I'm saying. I don't think it's helpful, the things he, he's saying about Katie, in my opinion. But it was just, when the incident happened, it was just Katie and Sebastian at the house, from my understanding. Now, I've got to imagine your mind is racing at the at the time you're hearing all this information. So as you're hearing the information from Katie, and from what you're telling me, it seems like you're a little upset in how things were handled. So what, what happened next? Um, where did you go? Um, where did she go? What did police do at that at that time? Because this is very early on, right? This is the morning of. They started asking me questions on where I'd been. I told them I'd been at work since I've been clocked in since before seven, but I'd been at work in the in the parking garage since about six o'clock the night before. And I told them they can call and verify where I've been at. And I just sat there and started listening, just listening to everything that was being said. Now, did you have... I can't believe my dog's snoring. If it's not barking, it's snoring. She's always got to interrupt. You know what? She's always got to take over the live stream. Any reason to believe that there was there were any problems in that home? Katie was pretty adamant about having a good weekend, which meant my son wasn't misbehaving in her point of view. So I'm trying to read between the lines here. Do you believe that she doesn't exercise enough patience with with Sebastian and that causes some problems in the in, in the home or she doesn't approach her her responsibilities as a parent appropriately like there's there's something autistic there. children take a different well autistic children take they, it's a different aspect when you're when you're a parent of an autistic child um you don't really get much freedom because you're you have to set a routine and you have to go abide by it and when she's sitting there telling me she Putting him to bed at nine o'clock the night before, or nine thirty the night before, and then, you know, she heard him in there and told him to go to bed and things like that. It's like there's not much of a routine, and with there's no routine, then autistic. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to look at that picture. When I look at them, I mean, there are things like. This was the interview, wasn't it, that they did with... Uh... Um, you don't really get much freedom 
in there and tell them to go to bed and things like that. It's like there's not much of a routine. Yeah, when I look at it, it was the first time when I saw this interview of these two, her face there, she does look, you know, a bit shifty, doesn't she? You know, uh, but again, it's just what, how someone looks. Sometimes people do look shifty. It's like she can't look at the camera, but, you know, and when I watched this interview with these two, I, I felt very clearly something had happened. She'd had an argument with him and, you know, lost her temper. Uh, that's how I felt in the beginning. It's just as time's gone on and nothing's... There must be some evidence. Now, don't... You know, for the police will have been searched that house. They will have looked for evidence. They will have looked for forensics. There's nothing. My personal opinion now, uh, and it's only an opinion, of course, because that's all we've got at the moment, I do think that Sebastian ran away, and I think something's happened to him uh, that we don't know. I don't I don't think it's Seth. I'm not saying that. Um, all I, The only criticism I've got of Seth is I don't like the way he's saying all these things on all these YouTube channels. But I'm not saying that I think he did anything. I personally, I think, my, I'm sort of leaning towards the opinion that maybe Sebastian did run away, that there was some sort of an argument, or maybe he took himself off like um, because he was annoyed with his mum or whatever, you know. I mean, I uh, I don't know her and I don't know Sebastian. I haven't got an idea of what his behaviour was. Uh, and probably there were difficulties. He, maybe he wasn't that easy to look after. Um, and maybe he's just got the ump with his mum because she's not let him do something or and he has run away uh, you know like oh I'll teach you sort of thing like kids sometimes do and he's got into problems because of it because surely 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 wouldn't there be some forensics somewhere you know if they what have they done with Sebastian's body if they'd taken him away in the car There'd be, you know, there'd be forensics, and I'm sure all their cars have been forensically examined, or certainly theirs have, you know. So where's the where's the forensics? Where's the, you know, the police? And somebody said in chat, which I think is um, a good thing. Uh, it, it was a good it is a good comment. So someone said maybe the police are letting them all just go off there and see what they say and see how they tie themselves in knots. Um, but actually, um, you know, I just don't know this. What this is what I was saying at the beginning of this uh, stream. This is just a, such a mystery. There's nothing, is there? There's no, uh, no. Well, unless the police have got details. As always, we don't know exactly what uh, the police have got and what the police may be waiting for. Maybe the police are just sitting back and seeing what people say and somebody's going to drop themselves in it. Or maybe, what you know, maybe he was taken off by some random person. Uh, it's, it's a complete mystery. And with there's no routine, then autistic children don't act the same way they're supposed to. When I've had him, there's a routine in my house when I have him. And he he's A, he's a teenager. You know, you're gonna listen, you're gonna hear some some back talk probably. I mean, they're growing. They're going to rebel some sort of some way. They're teenagers, you know. So you're gonna listen to it. You're gonna have to deal with it. But you still gotta remember that you're a parent. And You, you have to adjust your lifestyle to be able to make sure that they can adjust and learn and still grow. And you can't you can't do some of the things that that I've seen her do in the past. So so the the, the custody arrangement, it seems you, you both have custody and, and he'll spend time with you as well as with his mom. Were there any any indication um, in in your communications with Katie that like she didn't want custody, that she didn't want that responsibility, and 
and there were problems and, and she was running into some rough waters? Any Anything Most like that? Most of my discussions were actually taken care of with Chris. And... Um, yeah, so he says that clearly he was, his discussions were taking place with Chris. So he was he was more friendly with Chris than he was. He's obviously a lot of bad blood between him and Katie. He's really, you know, making great efforts to do Katie down every interview he's in. And maybe she deserves it. I don't know. But after a while, you start to think, oh, for God's sake, you know, this is not helpful talking about her that way and wasn't Sebastian going to live with him anyway so why would uh, if Katie did want rid of Sebastian well she was getting rid of him anyway because he was going off to live with him so why would she do anything Sebastian was supposed to come live with me Chris was working on Katie on getting her to agree to it and all I wanted was my son to come live with me. So this is from his own mouth there. He said he, uh, Chris, was working on Katie, getting her to agree with it. So she had, if she didn't want Sebastian living with her, it was Chris was trying to talk her into letting uh, Sebastian go and live with him. That's from his own mouth. So it was, you know, so people are saying that as if she hated Sebastian. There's a lot of people that are talking about as if she didn't want him. Does anybody really know that except what he said? Well, in fact, what he's saying is uh, he Chris was trying to talk her into it. Why did she need talking into it if she hated Sebastian so much? I've already got him enrolled in school. I've had him enrolled in school. I'm just, I gotta find him. I gotta find him. I wanna put something up on the screen here. This is from the uh, Sumner County Sheriff's Office. They made a Facebook post. Important announcement, attention everyone. We wanna clarify that the eyeglasses recently found are not related to Sebastian Rogers. The search operation planned for today, which is like today, has been in the works for several days. We appreciate your cooperation and understanding. Um, my understanding is that um, you and your team are the ones that found uh, these glasses. One of my teams. I've, uh, I, I have a group of volunteers that changes pretty much through, throughout the day, throughout the week. So whoever's off work that wants to come to help, they come to help. And then I separate everybody in teams and I ask them to go flyer this area or flyer that area. Yeah, and I'm not even going into tonight all the uh, the controversy over the search teams and this, that, and the other. There's been so many, so much controversy in this case. It's like everybody's uh, instead of them, you know, because really you would expect when a child goes missing uh, that the parents, whatever disagreements they had between them in the past. And obviously, he's, he's he, you know him and uh, Katie are estranged, and something's happened. Then it feels like you know for him to be on a better relationship footing with Chris than he is with Katie. But you'd think when the child goes missing, uh, those sort of things would should be forgotten, shouldn't they? They should be forgotten. There's no point in I was trying to think what was that other. There was another similar case where the parents. Started, oh, let me think who that was. Anyway, I'll think about it while I'm listening to this. We are listening to this video. There was another case like this where the parents, it turned out it was neither of them that had done anything to the child. Somebody else had taken this child away. I think it was the stepmother thinking about it. It wasn't the Gannon Stouch case, but it was uh, another similar case to Gannon Stouch. And again, the parents, you know, they were estranged and they were fighting. Like, instead of just being together and looking for their son, they were blaming each other. Though Katie is not blaming Seth for anything. It's him blaming her all the time. Uh, and she's made one statement when that was uh, said about that uh, child that allegedly uh, abused Sebastian that he told the world about. Uh, Katie made a statement. 
on Facebook um, because that obviously did make her angry because he made it out, you know, she, he's always making out what terrible mother she is. But, you know, let's remember this is what Seth is saying. That doesn't mean to say it's true. And one of my volunteer groups found glasses. They contacted me because they couldn't get a hold of anybody at the they told me they couldn't get a hold of anybody at the sheriff's office. I turned around, I called my contact. Um, they were busy. I flagged down a deputy sheriff that I saw by our volunteer area and turned around and had him wait. And I told them to put on gloves, bag them, tag them, bring them back so I could give them to the deputy sheriff that was there so that we could fill out the evidence and have a chain of evidence. And when you saw the glasses, do you agree with this, that they, they, they couldn't be Sebastian's? They were, they were very similar to Sebastian's. It's been, it's been a month and a half since I've seen my son. So, you know, it's a month and a half since I've seen his glasses. They looked really, really similar to the point that I didn't want to lose a chance that these might be evidence. So I gave them to the sheriff's department to log as evidence. I want to play for you, um, uh, Katie, who spoke uh, on YouTube to the Chronicles of Olivia, uh, describing that morning and the night before and I want to get your uh, reaction to what she says happened in, in, in the house and where they were. Let's watch. We went and picked up our niece. Uh, yeah, I got a call and um, asked if I could go and pick her up, and I did. And so um, we went to that, we went to BJ's, um, had a good time there. He ate a colossal popcorn. Um, Pam Hong put groceries away because we bought snacks because, you know, he's 15 and snacks. Um, we went to the bowling alley and then from there we went to dinner, came home. Um, he took out the trash because that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. About nine o'clock, told him to go to bed. He just didn't come out of his room where he was playing. He said, I must admit, when she's talking here, she's looking at him. He's looking sort of straight ahead, and then she's talking and she's looking at him. That was when, so that's what, oh, by the way, I've gifted some memberships. Here, so uh, I'm trying to get the memberships up so that I can unlock more emojis. Uh, so the more memberships I've got. That's you're welcome. I can't control who the gifted memberships go to, but it's great when they go to, to regular watchers, and I think they all are. So we've got um Simon, Bridget, Wesley, Caroline, she'll be happy. Uh Susef, I don't know about them. That's a very strange uh, name, but anyway, they're watching. Uh and they've been gifted a membership as well. So yeah, I'm trying to get my emojis up uh so that I can uh, put all the emojis on the uh, DMV as donated. So, yeah, I, that does, it's like, I wonder if something happened and she phoned him and now they've gone through their story together, possibly. Um, and, uh, you know, she always seems to be looking at him a bit and that. So, you know, but no evidence. So we've got to remember that always. Yeah, look at somebody mentioned earlier, look at Mick Murphy and the Samantha Murphy case. You know, everyone was down on him thinking he looked suspicious. Um, you know, it's not always what you think, is it? It's not always what you think. All right, good night, Mama. Good night, puppies. Love you. I went to bed. Um... He was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight I got up and I went to bed and um, 
six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning. And that's when he went in here. Seth, you know Katie better than all of us, obviously. You you know your son so well. Um, does that story, is there anything in that story that doesn't make sense to you? The inconsistencies, from what I've heard before, it, none of it makes sense. Thing, things aren't, you know. I'm not here to sling mud, but why is she asking Chris to verify what she did on Sunday when Chris wasn't here on Sunday? That is such... Or the fact that she said that she heard a thump on another interview and didn't bother to check on our son. You know, there's a... Now, you know, he, they, there was this thing that she heard the thump, wasn't it? Or the thud, she called it. And she says she shouted up to him, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, just go to sleep or something like that. Now, I don't think you do go into a 15-year-old's room necessarily, do you? Do you? Uh, but anyway, and then he said, I'm not here to sling mud, but... And then he slung mud. He, he is slinging mud. I'm sorry, he is. Um, and is, I don't think he should be doing that. But anyway, may turn out that uh, it is to do with her and Chris in the end, but it may not. There was doing some, some noise or a thump. I mean, this... The information that I, I receive from watching any of their podcasts don't make sense. Um, Seth, please uh, stay with us. Uh, I have a few more questions and I want to make sure um, everyone, right. why we're doing this. I'm going to leave this uh, interview now. So this was an early interview that he did. And it... It's as interviews have gone on, and probably because he is getting to the end of his tether. I imagine that is why exactly what's going on. He's getting to the end of his tether. He's sort of unraveling a little bit, isn't he? And each interview he does, he seems maybe he's on more uh, uh, medication, maybe he's drinking more. I don't know what he's doing, but each interview he does, somebody should be... Get hold of him, if you like, and say, what about his parents? Why? Because, you know, they were at the vigil and that. He's, per he, he's in contact with his parents. They need to get hold of him and say, look, stop doing these interviews. You know, stop doing the interviews because it's, it, it's just not helpful. But anyway, that's my opinion. But also, so now I want to show you... Um, This is another YouTuber, The Grey Zone. I know some of you watch him. Just turn that one off. Uh, and, you know, I was watching this today and I just wanted to show you, I hope he, he doesn't mind me using it under fair use, I suppose. I, I am subscribed to him and I'm going to like his video. Uh, video. And then... Um, I like listening to Gray sometimes and the, the things he talks about, but he talks about the things that I talk about, I suppose, things that are in the news just the same. He's obviously he's got a lot more subscribers than I have, but he he's got a bit of a downer on uh, Seth as well or the way that Seth is going around doing these interviews. And also, well, really, why I wanted to show you this part of the video is he shows an interview that Katie does. Just to... I mean, <laughs> yeah, and they don't. I'll be honest with you. I think she's at a, a, a total wit's end. That she, I think that she just, you know, in your head, just personally in your head or my head, I think the, all the stuff you see is going on. You got to be wondering what the hell happened to your child. You got to think who the hell has him. If they got him, what they doing to him? All this stuff is millions of this stuff is running through your head. 
And if people think that ain't what's going on, I'm telling you, it, you would have a million things of thinking what the hell could happen to your child. You know, somebody raping them, got bees in them, cutting I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is all running in these people's head. It would be mine. I'd be crazy. <laughs> I couldn't control myself. I'd be getting pissed. I wish, to be honest with you, if they get mad and they say anything, they bury them. Mm -hmm. But I wish someone would say, you know, we're just so tired of you people doing this, you know, you know, coming and crawling all over us like this. I don't know, Gary. I'm just glad you don't do it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I but, just throw that, like, that's a, just a theory you could come up with that's a counter theory. I don't know any, right. I don't have a, I don't know no, what happened know to that. any of them at all, you know? No, I don't know any of them all, but I just. Yeah, Bridget, you're right. It does. It doesn't like if someone doesn't agree with him. But I suppose, you know, maybe uh, that's how we all feel a little bit. I don't know. But, uh, but I th at least he says what he thinks. He's not worrying about, you know, what somebody thinks of him. Um what was I going to say then? What that guy, that, I don't know how you get people, I don't know how to take phone calls, otherwise I'd take phone calls as well. I think it'd be hilarious taking phone calls from the public uh, because you, you would get, um, you know, you'd get some interesting calls, wouldn't you? But um, this guy, what he's saying is right. If your child was missing, how could you, this is, is always a thing about the McCann's, wasn't it? When Madeline McCann went missing and Jerry and Kate were going on round jogging round Pride de Luce, you know, in their normal routine, jogging, putting their other two kids in the nursery, putting their other two kids in the kids club when their daughter had just been snatched, apparently. That's what, to me, rankles with them, you know, is like, how could you even rest? One minute, how could you go jogging in your normal routine? How could you leave, you know, you've lost one child. How could you uh, leave the other two children that you had in the, in a kids' club, in the inn, the resort where your other child had been snatched from? I would not have let those children out of my sight. You know, uh, you just wouldn't do it if you were worried that, that, that uh, Madeline genuinely had been abducted, you would not leave your other two children in the kids' club in the same resort where uh, Madeline had been abducted from. You just wouldn't do it. And then go and do your uh, jogging routine and this, that, and the other, as if nothing's happened. Because as this guy says, when a child goes missing, or anyone, but particularly a child, you would all you would be thinking about is what was happening to them in that moment you couldn't you wouldn't be able to sleep would you you'd almost be praying that they were dead is better than they were being abused or they had been trafficked or that you know some terrible things were happening to happening to them uh you just won't be able to rest you know i get what you're saying but when i see him come at him like this mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like what do they do when they've done something they start throwing it back on somebody that's mm -hmm. kind of the thing yeah i mean you can I look at it like up. he's you can <laughs> actually make it you know i'm just saying he seems more mm -hmm. not in touch than the proudfoots do to me i mean the proud proudfoots I, everyone always comes let me just say this see in the proudfoot situation everybody goes well, how come they're not that, out there searching every second of every day how come they're not doing this how come they're not doing this? why did she leave town and go with him that's here's why everybody I, i've said this forever I, I, is because the hate that was built up towards them immediately mm -hmm. after their first interview they didn't have mm -hmm. any safe place to be well if it was me no. gray i would stay there we got you don't know what the hell you do with with pitchfork and idiots running around think, outside your house i mean forget that and that and i also think he took her out of there more than just about her well-being and being safe i think mentally yeah i mean is, he has is, to be out of town to work right because nobody is going to send them a nickel okay nobody's no. there, are there there can't be a fund yeah and that was interesting because uh in this last pasquale interview that uh seth did god it was going on and on about his cash app and this that and the other and i know he needs money to do his flyers and his this that and the other but it was just so much and as Gray says there, you know, the Proudfoots, uh, 
you know, how are they going to go out and get flyers made and this, that and the other and travel all around the country? No one's going to send them any money because everyone's hated them from the very first interview that they did. And then it's all been made worse over time by the things that Seth has said. Uh, you know, it, it, it has. It has. He has... He has made everything worse. And I know, I know, you know, he's in the situation he's in. It must be awful. But um, I just think, you know, somebody should be looking after Seth. Somebody, where it be it is, surely his parents could take him, you know, be there and sort of maybe give him some advice. Or the police should give him some advice on what to do and what not to do. And something that was funny when I was listening to Gray earlier today uh what made me laugh? I thought, oh God, you're just typical YouTuber because his beeper thing went off and he had to go and give his dog some tablets. And I thought, see how dogs they just take over your live streams one way or another. In my dogs, if they're not barking or snoring, I mean God, they're always up to something. Razor for him because nobody's gonna send him a nickel. He has to go work. Mm -hmm. Now, would if you were in their situation, given the hate that has been created by all the YouTubers out there. Do you think it would be you would allow your wife to sit in? Oh, sorry, I'm gone. What happened there? Ah. In that house, and just sit there all by yourself at no, night, but, and with all these wackos no. running around, probably break your window in. You know, they're just crazy people. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna put his name out there, but you see him where he was driving around and some family or something and i'm just going like hey, go away you know go away and leave these people alone i just don't understand them like i don't <laughs> but i guess it's all about money you know that it's all when it comes to this these channels with these people that does it you know it's mm -hmm. nancy grace is what i watch but sometimes i get a little tired of her too because i think she get she uh takes a lot of what she's seen on youtube and puts it together too she does she so does do that she know. does do that like she she seems like she's <laughs> like a jlr like hey wow that guy's really into you know, well, that's that. that that's the guy i'm talking about that guy's, a, that guy's that a nut guy. job man. it's just unbelievable <laughs> he's yeah. on there was something new and i go oh i mean God. i but the thing is i, I do i do I, I appreciate when he goes out and he's just filming a location that other people aren't at. But as soon as he starts opening his mouth with a theory, you can forget it, man. That guy can't think his way out of a shit. Well, got, you know what got me about him is how he ran right to his job. And that's exactly what they did to John. That Dolly Vision and Bullhorn Betty yeah. went, went there and attacked him and his job. That stuff should be prohibited. I don't care. I mean, yeah. He should have a right to do it. But I agree. I anyways, agree. I'm gonna let you go, and I, I I thank you, and you are. I'm gonna give you a 99. Right now, I want to show the latest you on the search. You found this interview. So, pretty. so um, I'm gonna show this. I'm not sure what this. This is not a YouTube channel. I'm not sure what this is, but Gray was showing it, uh, so I thought I would show you this as well. Now, as I say. Please take note, I don't know what happened to Sebastian. I have absolutely no clue. But all I know is there's something that sits uncomfortably with me. And it, I can see from people that, uh, people that are coming in, not every, you know, it's not only me. There's something, there's something that sits uncomfortable. It may just be that Seth is being allowed to be this loose cannon uh, uh, around the YouTube channels. Um, I just don't think it should be happening. But anyway, the YouTubers are letting him do it and um, the police are not stopping him from doing it and nobody seems to be taking control of Seth. He could probably do with someone taking control of him, if you like, looking after him a bit better because I think he's unravelling completely. Anyway, let's have a look at this interview with Katie. We need your help to find a missing Tennessee teenager That's under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? 
So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, their community. That little boy's face, well, say little boy, he's not a little boy, he's a 15 year old boy. But every time you see his little face, it's very heart rending. Communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they well. can. Um, and we're going like to find it. Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is uh, high functioning uh, autistic. Uh, okay, we're pausing it now because Cindy Leon says, feeling lonely in my freak way. Don't let her be an amber maiden. All right, you guys. There we go. Kit Kat helped out. Who's all, who's else is coming in? Let's go. See if you Just can do play it. Play the video, Gray. <laughs> grease <laughs> out there faster than a grease pig. All right, we're gonna have to have this on pause until we get some support for Cindy Leon. Oh crap! No. This is where his uh, alarm goes off to remind him to give his dog some medication. Oh, God, it's just, as you know, the, the thing about YouTube is you know the real people out there with, with real lives just, you know, it's like it, what you see is what you get. He's got to go and give his dog some medication now. Oh, like that, I have to give Blue some medication. So hopefully when I come back, we get some support for Cindy Leon's a request there. All right, here we go. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, it goes off now. So I'll answer the calls in a second. I gotta go feed Blue. I gotta give Blue his medication. All right, let me. Loves fishing. Green tea. Oh. You're so goofy. There you go, a little video of him. That's something that I was saying earlier that seemed strange to me. Where's the videos of Sebastian? You know, in this day and age when people take so much, so many videos for uh, social media, don't they? Uh, I thought that was something that was missing. So we've got a little video here of him. Let me just go back to where Gray get, because Gray goes off, he gives his dogs their, his dog at their tablets and then he comes back goes back to this interview let's see i would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience uh we are we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find sebastian what's the latest on the search so law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they mom. can. Um, That's why and we're going like to find it. Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is uh, high functioning uh, autistic. Uh, okay, we're pausing it now because Cindy Leon says, feeling lonely in my freak way. Oh. Don't let her be an amber maiden. All right, you guys. So, uh, OPB Nation. Uh, what was the name of it again? Hmm. Oh, well, can't remember the name, but. Autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> he looks like such a happy kid in that one. He? <laughs> He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he. He does look very happy in that video. I mean, it is uh, obviously. I, I expect that's a couple of years ago. But you know what? We don't. We don't know uh, when uh, Chronicles of Olivia went there. You know, we do not know what their family dynamic was really doing. We just literally do not know. He can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the the Naruto anime character. And I gotta fix my numbers on that. Uh, that uh, that thing there. 
Hold on, what, that, what the hell is that one? It's uh, right here. This reminds me of one of my streams. I gotta fix that uh, command. Okay, now I'll play it. What does that say? One sixty-eight. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab, and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you, you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to. It's 195, 100, not 168. To, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. Um, if you know. Now, I must admit, when I watched this, I, I, well, uh, to be honest, as I, I, did, I haven't watched it, I was listening to it, I was doing stuff earlier and listening to this, I did feel that was real emotion from her. I did feel that. I didn't feel that it was false. And that's the first time I've seen any emotion from her. Know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Yeah, that, absolutely sincere to me. Don't I've got to say, it seems sincere to me as well. It did, you know, but uh, who knows? What will come out in the end, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, looks like she just wanted to get all the real information out there, told, told us about how he is, etc., but how come she didn't search that one night, you bastard? <laughs> because of people like you. The ones asking that question are the same, the exact people of why she didn't do that. You're the ones that hate them and treated them like garbage. That they felt like they had no support. I would, I can imagine. You know, and I still don't know what the hell happened here, and maybe someday it'll turn out that I misperceived it. But I can tell you, I wouldn't. Yeah, I agree. So all these people that are carping on, why didn't they do this and why didn't they do that? Why aren't they out searching? searching? They're not out searching because of people like you who are saying, you know, terrible things about them without actually knowing what they're doing and they're, like, hounding them. Anyway, uh, oh, so I just want to say thank you to Devon, who's just gifted five more memberships. Oh, so Devon says, hi, Vicky and everyone. I'm really enjoying your channel and videos. I'm sorry for not chatting and interacting. Oh, don't be sorry. Listen, the other chatters will do enough chatting for, for they can chat for, they can chat for uh, 10 people. Don't worry. But thank you so much for the memberships. And I believe the memberships have gone to Michelle. Michelle will be really pleased. Mara, Admit Audacity, Rachel, she's a regular chatter, and Michael Wood. Thank you so much, Devin. Thank you. Very kind. And don't worry about not, but chat when you feel like it. But if you don't feel like it, that's no problem. But you won't get any hassle here from anybody uh, because if not, if you do, I boot them out. So there you go. Uh, we've we've got a lovely community. We have got a lovely community. So yeah, no need to apologise. Definitely, thank you so much. Love to Devon. Let's give Devon some. Oh, I haven't got the heart anymore on the members emojis. What can we do? Oh, I know what I can do. Bless you. Bless you, Devon. Thank you. And that's, I'm trying to get my membership up just a little bit so that I can unlock more special members emojis that we can use. So thank you so much, Devon. Very kind. Right, let's go back to Grey. So I can see, like, Grey's causing a bit of controversy. But I doubt you've watched changed my, my mind channel, on how I feel But you might be, you never know. About how I don't think that any of the parents, you know, likely have anything to do with physically the reason he's missing. However, who knows, right? I'm just saying we don't have any information. Law enforcement told us they don't have any information. 
And so that's where all of us should be on in that mode at that point. And that's how I feel. I do agree with him. I don't feel uh, any of the parents have, 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 have got anything physically to do with his disappearance in the sense I don't think Seth, nor Katie, nor even Chris have actually done anything to Sebastian. I feel like Sebastian, but I do feel that some harm has come to Sebastian uh, because maybe he ran off because of an argument, because of something, because he wasn't happy with something. Uh, I don't know enough, you know, about their home life, etc. But I just don't. But I could be completely wrong, you know, and it could, to, you know, tomorrow, Katie or Chris might be arrested for all I know. But um, I'm just saying how I feel. And I do feel that Seth, needs the needs to be reined in a little bit for his own good for his own good i am worried about seth i feel i feel like he is unraveling a bit and i don't feel like his accusations against katie are helpful that's all i'm saying now there was another bit anyway let's just hear what he's got to say now uh, where did you get that alley cat Oh, Jesus. Where, where, who'd you get that from? I think that might be it from that video. So what would... Now, I was looking for... Uh, I've got another interview somewhere. Hang on. Uh, one minute while I've just found this other interview. Won't be long, bear with, bear with. Right, so someone kindly sent me some interviews. Not that one. Sorry. Won't be a minute. Honestly, I'm, I'm just trying to get this. Sorry, I can't, I'm struggling to find it. I'm struggling to find this video, sorry. No, hang on. Right. Let's have a look at this. Share it. So this was the rally where, look, is this Seth who's walking around with this uh, Chris Repent or Repent, Chris? I mean, it's not helpful, is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, definitely it is. No, do you want to pull over and talk? I'll talk to you. Oh, sorry, I just need to give JLR his credit. This is from JLR Investigates. He's done a lot of videos about this case. Hi, everybody. 
place on every video. I knew we'd have a couple naysayers. I already had somebody flip me the middle finger a little while ago for holding the sign. Now, why somebody would do that? I mean, I definitely believe you. Repent or perish for Chris Proudfoot. Well, you know, this is not right. I don't care what anyone says. It's not right. Nobody knows that Chris has done anything. He's done things in the past. I'm not... Uh, you know, he, maybe he is a complete twonk, I don't know, but this guy is an absolute twonk. Hi, Melon. You know, now I think that actually what Sarah's just saying there, it's important because often abs absent fathers, if you like, or estranged fathers, do blame the mothers for how they brought their kids up. They're all complaints. They're not the ones that have to deal with them day in, day out and do that. And the, I think the mothers always get the blame personally, you know, it's always the mother's fault. So until I know for sure it is the mother's fault in this case, I'm not going to be throwing accusations at the mother. And she seemed very genuine to me just before. So, you know, until there's any evidence that it's the mother, I won't be throwing accusations at the mother. <laughs> Uh, hi, Mello. Well, let me ask you first, since you brought it up, what, what's this doing? What is it not doing? Let me ask Nobody's you. been proven guilty. That's true. Okay. Why do we have is to that, is that it? Why do we have to affect this problem? Let me ask you why you think it's not helping find Sebastian first. Do you have boots on the ground looking for? I have. You have what? So is this guy. Okay. What does this do? Well I'm waiting on your on your uh, reason why you think it's not helping What find does this do? How many days are we on? Forty something around there. Hi Maggie, I'm not sure if I've said hello to you or not, but hi. Right. I just law, want to know. law enforcement has scoured the entire area, right? Correct. So we're we're going. And hi, Matthew, because I can't remember. I can't remember who I've said hello to or not now. Now past day forty. Now let me get up here so I can be eye level with you. Okay. What's your name? I'm not going to give that information. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. So the reason we're asking uh, Chris Proudfoot to repent is because he has lied on camera multiple times during multiple interviews. Yes or no? Have, been you, have you been following the case? I have been following. Aha, uh -huh. I keep doing that. Okay. Okay. So you don't have a comment on that? No, sir. Okay. So you think he's innocent? You think he's guilty? You think there's foul play? You think he just wandered off? I'm just asking your opinion, man. It's not my expertise to share. Okay. So what, what do you mean by expertise? I'm not law enforcement. Okay. You have to be law enforcement to form a conclusion that somebody's not telling the truth? No, sir. Well, there we go. So we have watched Mr. Proudfoot incessantly lie, change his story multiple times. Okay. Now I'm coming from, let me just tell you where I'm coming from. Okay, you see where we're standing off, you don't have to be. I deal with this whole time for five years. I don't that's right. Okay, so I'm coming at this from a hundred percent biblical perspective, right? Are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Believe in the Bible? Yes, sir. What does the Bible say about people who lie? I just want to know what this is doing about. Well, let's stay on target, man. I'm, a, I'm trying to explain it to you, but you keep redirecting the conversation. So we ask you again. What does the Bible say about people who lie? I'm getting, I'm getting to a point here. I'm getting to a point here. We talk about the Bible. I'm talking. Who is this person? Have you seen how his legs are uh, going up and down? Uh, I just think this is all bizarre for a missing boy. What? How is this helping uh, find Sebastian? 
how is walking around with this this placard repent chris proudfoot uh, and this having a go with this guy with his knee shaking how is that helping to find sebastian again about to find out what you're doing to help and i'm trying to answer that i'm out here because of the bible because of what the bible says i'm a christian i'm a man of god i go out and i preach the word of god so we're out here in a different place like you're asking me why i'm doing this and why this is helping find sebastian i'm trying to tell you why why are you wanting to repent this problem Okay, again, I'm going to go back to my question. You said you're a Christian. I don't want to answer questions about Chris the Bible. Proudfoot has lied. Okay, and the, I'll tell you what the Bible says. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says that all liars will find their place in the lake of fire, okay, which is the second death. Which, as a so, Ocean, is this Jaden, the guy who supposedly had a gun at some place that he turned up? What? Why is Jaden not happy then with this? Is it because what has it got to do with? finding Sebastian because Jaden will be anti Chris if he's Seth's friend he'll be anti Chris why is he annoyed with him Joe it's just mad isn't it really it's mad as a Christian that is hell okay that's what Jesus taught when he walked the earth now Chris Proudfoot reports that he's a Christian Maggie Seth was friends with Chris before all this happened he was the one he said earlier uh, all the any talk about Seb Sebastian and uh, went through Chris. He had the because obviously there's a big thing between Seth and Katie, and the, so any sort of Chris was like the the intermediate between Seth and uh, Katie. So they were when, when I say friends, you know, I mean I'm not saying they, you know, go down the pub together. I don't know, but they weren't. They were on good terms before all this. I'm just not sure now why Jaden is annoyed with this guy. I don't know why this guy's doing this, but then I don't understand why Jaden's annoyed with him because Jaden is on Seth's side, isn't he? But he's lied multiple times. I mean, everybody. It does not take an expert in law enforcement to see that somebody's not telling the truth. When you change your story multiple times. So we're out here to call Chris Proud for 20 minutes because it's been over 40 days. Are you expecting Chris Proud to come out here? Let me finish my statement, okay? And then you can ask him that question. Sebastian has been missing for over 40 days, right? We agree on that? Yes. Law enforcement experts have scoured the entire area. Volunteers like myself, I've been out hiking, looking. He's been out hiking, looking. Everybody's been out searching. Law enforcement did a massive search just the other day. Nothing. He's vanished without a trace. Correct. Now, statistically speaking, when cases like this unfold like this, it's usually somebody that knows the victim, somebody very close to the victim. And the last person that saw Sebastian alive, supposedly, was Katie Crowther. Correct. So, I would, I would. I keep pressing the wrong computer. Tackling this from a different angle, okay? So the different angle is, just like law enforcement said, you can't leave any stone unturned. And even Chris Proudfoot himself said, everything is on the table. Nothing can be ruled out. And that was with direct questions from Nancy Grace from other interviewers that directly asked her, Mr. Proudfoot, you know what happened to Sebastian? Are you guilty? Do each time he Maggie Jaden is a, f a, d a friend of Seth's. I don't know whether he was a friend, I think he's a neighbor, isn't he? Jaden or the son of uh, one of the neighbors. Uh, he's become involved with Seth's cause. Basically, you've got two camps here, haven't you? You've got Seth, Sebastian's biological father, and his camp, if you like, which is the bigger. Uh, camp because everyone's sympathetic towards Seth and then you've got Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot for a biological mum and her husband her current husband that everybody hates it's like uh, everything they do is bad uh, and everybody thinks is involved somehow in Sebastian's disappearance but there is no evidence of that um, so you've got these two camps and Jaden is in Seth's camp but then it seems like in between this, now they're annoyed with this guy who doesn't like Chris Proudfoot, but they don't like the fact uh, that he, this guy is carrying these posters about Chris Proudfoot, but not actually uh, distributing flyers for Sebastian. So 
Oh God, it's crackers. The answer. <laughs> I can tell you we've been we've not been ruled as suspects, but nothing is left off the table. Okay? So to help find Sebastian to answer your question, it's not an easy yes or no answer. It's not something I can just give you simply, man. Um, you have to attack all angles, man. You have to look at all people. If we just close the door on the, on the possibility of the Proudfoot's knowing something, and that's where Sebastian is hiding behind that door, the answers to Sebastian's missing, going missing, then we're never going to know. So if you just say, oh, well, there's no evidence, so we should just shut that door and not even look, not even look there, not even call attention to it. I mean, you're doing Sebastian any justice. Man. I'm not doing Sebastian any justice. Okay. Well, that's my answer, bud. God uh, bless you, man. so jt what what's going on yeah so this young man pulls up and he says what is this uh doing to, to help find uh sebastian and i tried to explain it to him and i told him um you know, we're out here because we can't, like the law enforcement say, we can't leave any stone left unturned, right? Every possibility has to be examined here, guys. Uh, so we're out here to call, we're out here on a biblical perspective. Some of you guys may not agree with our beliefs, and that's perfectly fine. That's between you and God. But we're out here to call Chris Prophet to repentance because we've caught him in several lies. And the Bible says that lie is a sin. So this young man didn't like that. He came up here and he talked. I asked him to come up here and talk to me. He came up and talked to me. He walked down the hill, stood over me, and he was kind of shaking and violently trembling like this. Um, I felt a little uncomfortable by that, so I kind of moved up the hill where J JR is, and I said, let me get eye level with you, man. We don't have to be confrontational, this and that. Um, well, I didn't see it, but apparently our other group here saw it. Um, he had his hand on his firearm, on the grip, and he was, he was uh, I don't know if he was doing it to intimidate me into silence or what, And um, but yeah, that's the case. One of them called the police, and now they're out searching for this. Uh, for the suspect so oh wow That's they're it. searching for him so now the police want to talk to me so i'm going to go up here and talk to these gentlemen all right all right so now the police have come uh yeah i mean it is crazy standing there with a placard saying repent chris proudfoot really i wouldn't have thought you'd be allowed to do that i mean i'm you know i'm not i don't know if chris proudfoot has told lies or what he's done or what he hasn't done but it just does seem a bit of a bizarre thing to do doesn't it stand there with a placard saying repent uh or perish i mean he's even had he, he's got it on has he got it on his sweatshirt or i know it was on the placard you just think really there are better things that he could be doing which really would be yeah do have you seen this boy you know sebastian rogers you know remember the boy who's gone missing I guess it's not on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what you guys doing? Well, we're out here just bringing away. Oh, well, they're having a laugh and a joke. Ernest, you know, Sebastian's. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, you know, no, uh, uh, oh no, he has got a sweatshirt on with repent or perish on it. Don't you just love Americans though? So he's gone up to the police guy here, and the policeman and he's going, I'm just ra raising awareness of Sebastian. Oh, okay. You know, if that was in Britain, you'd be arrested now, probably for public disorder or something. Like, you can't do anything in Britain. I do love America, really, sometimes. It just... 
you know the uh, the way the policeman just went oh okay you know I mean, look what happens uh, in britain if you go and try and make a bloody protest about anything it's get arrested yeah, now <laughs> the police are just standing there being filmed they don't seem too bothered about it uh it, it just they just crap me up honestly they do it's brilliant it's brilliant i love it i love the americans <laughs> Honestly, if I got a placard tomorrow and I went out in my little village in Spain, I do, like that, I just don't know what would that, what the, I could, the, the, well, it'd be worth doing because the Guardia Seville, they look so gorgeous in their uniforms. So it'd be worth doing and worth getting arrested. But uh, I don't think they'd let me do it. I really don't. I didn't take any threat to an actual fire. Mm -hmm. They saw. I mean, There's no aggressive protesting going on here. Oh, no, like no, that. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I, we haven't had a call. I haven't had a call from the representative. They're just like, there's no aggressive protesting going on. He goes, no, no. So they're just like, all right, that's great. We're off. They're going for a coffee. We know our, we know the law, we know our rights, we know where we can stand, where we can't stand. We're not gonna pose the police for okay. you guys wanna tell us it's fucking time. You're not causing no disturbance to us. I didn't see nothing wrong with it, so yeah, we're gonna get You're not causing any disturbance to us, I didn't say anything wrong with it, so there you go. No, and it, wait, you know, I don't understand why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, you know, I don't really see the point of it, but uh, he isn't really causing a disturbance, is he? Some people upset, man. Some people don't like the message anymore. You know, we're, we're living in a fallen society. They want to they silence your personal rights, you know? So they're going to come up and they're going to do what they do. There you go. That's a good, uh, good video from JLR. You know, he's always boots on the ground, isn't he? And it is interesting. Ah, so basically, that's more or less what I've got to show you. And I'm not, so I don't want people thinking, you know, that I'm saying that Seth has anything to do with that. I've never said, I don't think that Seth has got anything to, I don't think any of them has got have got anything to do with the actual disappearance of uh, sebastian in a you know in that they've actually done something to him i honestly really don't think that but um something's happened to sebastian something's happened to him you know people don't just disappear into thin air especially 15 year old boys because he hasn't got you know, he's got to be eating somewhere, he's got to be sleeping somewhere, he's got to be going to the moo somewhere. You know, he's, he can't just have disappeared into the ether. So this is the job that the police have got, you know, and among and it's a difficult job because then amongst all that, there's all the animosity between the parents and everything, and they're not working together, are they? You know, the parents are not working together to um find sebastian and that's making the whole thing even more difficult uh i wonder if i can let me just bear with me again because i just want to see if i can find the interview because the interview that finally uh sort of you know made me worry about seth the most was the interview he phoned up the pascal show 
I don't know if you ever watched Pascal. Now, of course, Pascal, he does thing. He doesn't only talk about true crime. He talks about all sorts of things, interviews, uh, celebrities, etc. It is. He calls it a variety talk show. And Seth uh, recently phoned up. I think it's not the first time. Uh, but I can't find this video. I was looking for it. Let's see. And he's done quite a lot of videos about Sebastian's. Uh, sorry, about Sebastian. Or maybe it's this one. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Okay, so yeah, and I just, I don't know how I caught this interview because I don't think I am subscribed to Pascal, uh, but maybe, I, I'm, or maybe I am. Lose track, don't you, in the end? But um, here he is. Yeah, it was a very, this is it, very strange interview, you know, very strange phone in. So Pascal was talking about Sebastian. Um, that'd be greatly appreciated okay we got to get into some things okay we got conversations that we have to get into we get we have many miles to go before we sleep tonight and this is very important coverage because as of late there has been a lot of questions sprouting off from what has happened from a couple days ago as i as i said we have somebody very special coming on okay Seth Rogers was on Justin on TikTok's show just the other day, and he dropped some serious bombshells revolving around tragedies that Sebastian Rogers went through around the age of eight, seven, or eight years old. And of course, everyone, it was a clutch my pearls moment. Let's be real, okay? It, it grabbed my heart, too. It was heartbreaking to hear this information. And, of course, you know, when we hear those kind of things, I'm going to be honest. It made me have a lot of questions. Don't get me wrong. Justin did a fantastic job having that conversation with our good friend Seth. But at the same time, it still spawned so many more questions that I feel need to be answered. And then while I was sitting there, ruminating letting that stuff marinate you know simmer all the way down to the plums katie proudfoot comes out with a statement that was also very telling not only did it answer what what seth said earlier which was the question of is this real is this true or not she confirmed that what happened to Sebastian when he was seven or eight years old was actually true. But there was other things that she threw into that conversation that I was like, oh man, we have got to have a conversation right Chia. So I'm very honored to bring back our good friend, our, our brother on this show. We are praying for him. We are praying for Sebastian's safe return back home back into Seth's arms. Please welcome Seth Rogers to the show. Seth, my brother, how you doing? Well, I went to the doctor today. They gave me some stuff for my nerves. Pain Oops. in my shoulder. They gave me some muscle relaxers and uh, some steroids. And then, then proceeded to tell me to take a few days off or else... Quote, unquote, you'll be dead within a week if you don't slow down. Oh, boy. 
So he's been to the doc. Thank God the doctors told him to slow down. So he's gone to the doctors. The doctors give him more tablets. He's told him you'll be dead with, before the end of the week if you don't slow down. Good God. Uh, because I understand that you've been having some sort of muscle, like you tore a muscle or something like that. Can you explain a little bit more? I go in Monday for uh, not to violate HIPAA, but I go in Monday to get a image done to mm. see if there's any tears. They gave me muscle relaxers to relax the muscle because they have a feeling that it's pushing up against the nerve, which is causing the nerve damp pain all the way down my damn arm to uh, my fingers. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Some, so, so some serious nerve damage going on there. Can, you ask, can I ask you something, though? How did that happen, actually? What happened no. to you? Go ahead. No, I didn't. Oh, you have no idea. So you didn't fall during a search or anything of that sort. This just happened. Probably muscle strain from doing what I was doing and then, you know, tightens up muscle. And I didn't go get it looked at like I should have. And, but taking care of it now. Give me a couple gotcha. of days of rest. And then hit the hit the ground running. Yeah, man. I mean, is this gonna is this gonna slow you down at all in your search? Are you gonna like take a little bit of a break, hang up the hat for a little bit during this search? What's what's the story here? Talk to me. Do you think that it's like just this society that we live in, in now that you know there is a lot of uh, obsession with celebrity and fame and YouTube. Could you imagine this years ago, you know, like uh, somebody being on, it's like it's like becoming a celebrity because your child is missing almost. I, I'm not saying that as a criticism of Seth, he's got wrapped up in it. And the YouTubers are, are encouraging it personally, I think. I'm just going to take a little break. Um, they're still going to do flyers. We're going to have a, uh, a vigil held on Sunday. I still plan on being there. Um, I'm just going to take it a little bit easier, give it some time to, to rest, for me to rest and for it to heal because it's been interrupting. It hurts. So, thanks enough that it keeps me awake. No doubt. No doubt. Well, I mean, first off, I mean, I commend you for not slowing down, you know, still going after it taking care of things, getting things taken care of as far as finding Sebastian. But you just said that there's going to be a vigil on Sunday. Is that correct? From my understanding, we're setting one up at the rudder for Sunday. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Do we know the time and do we know the time for Sunday? Currently right now it's uh, six o'clock, but that really kind of depends on the weather. Gotcha. Are we supposed to have some bad weather on, on Sunday? 60% uh, chance of rain. Oh, yeah. That, that can definitely do that. That can definitely do that for show. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So the rudder, 6 p.m. Okay. Sunday. And yeah. that's all depending on weather. If weather is permitting, there will be a vigil. Yeah, I don't want people out in nasty weather. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, don't I want anybody to go sick. No, I don't blame I don't blame you, bro. I don't blame you at all. I really, really don't blame you at all. Um, and so thank you so much for that update. I really do appreciate that. Can we talk about any updates on the search before we dive into all this stuff? Uh, all this murky water. Uh, are, are there any updates with the search right now? No. None that I've been told of. Okay. Have you had any conversations with Law enforcement as of late, have they reached out to you with anything at all? Nope. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. All right. Aside from your shoulder back situation, how you feeling? Same as yesterday. Got one goal in mind. That's fine, Sebastian. Gotcha. Okay. 
Fair enough. Now, now, uh, we uh, of course we got to get straight into the meat and potatoes of this, right? So, are you are you ready to have some conversations? I know you got questions. I haven't let you all down with answers yet. Yeah. All right. So you had a conversation just the other day. You dropped some serious, some serious bombshells. I know I that you that I really don't. I was so tired and exhausted. I really don't even remember the podcast, man. Wow. Whoa. Really? Really? I mean, I get it. Being sleep sleep deprived, running on just nothing but adrenaline all day long. You were also on many, many shows uh, that day as, too, as well. Correct? Yeah. I mean, everybody wanted a piece of me, and I felt like the pie was empty. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get that. But still, no matter what, nonetheless, there was a conversation that was had. You did right. drop you did drop some very big pieces of information. And whether you had said those things beforehand or after, it, it, it still doesn't matter. This was live. This was out. This obviously made the rounds um, and shocked a lot of people it shocked me too my brother i'm gonna be real i was shocked um very very shocked um but of course you know i have some questions revolving around all of that okay or revolving around the information that you gave so let's talk about it because what it have to do with sebastian? yes that information that had to do with sebastian go ahead what are you gonna say um Mr. Proudfoot, Chris, people were asking why he didn't want my son around his daughter. And he kept telling me that if people keep asking the question, he's going to answer it. Hmm. And turned around and stated that if he tells them, people will stop looking for Sebastian. Really? Okay. Can I ask you something before you continue on? I don't mean to interrupt. But I'm curious, what comp when was this conversation that was had? And was that something on a podcast or is, was that something between you guys behind, you know, on your own time behind closed doors? Yes. So him sitting there saying. Uh, don't know again. I it don't want. Go ahead. What were you going to say? It was over the phone. Okay, so he's so him saying, if people start asking why I don't want Sebastian around Faith, they won't go and look for for Sebastian. If he they said, found out, if they found out the truth, why? yeah, that people wouldn't go look for my son. Okay, I had told him you don't want. To, I told him you don't want to go down that route. Gotcha, and he said this. Between you and him. Uh, Katie was on the phone too. So Katie was on the phone as well. Okay. Of so what was the conversation like? I mean, was this just a regular conversation or was this a full on blown out argument? I think he tried to try to make it one. It wasn't going to be one. Okay. Uh yeah. So you know, these are the interviews that Seth should not be doing because. Uh, I don't know, there's some, uh, I'm sure he's at the end of his tether and everything's awful, but he should not be doing this interview. And to be honest, you know, I do think he's been used a little bit. Um, I did repeat it because I didn't appreciate him saying that when it's like, dude, it's just another time that you and his mom have felt him. And I'm sitting here trying to put the pieces back together. Gotcha. Yeah. If okay. You, my my whole issue about that is if you cared that much for my son as you do that you, your daughter that you don't want my son around because there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Why weren't you thinking about that when he's under your roof? No doubt. That's one thing I'm very curious about as well. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. 
But what was the reason? What was the what was the origin of this actual fight or argument or discussion on this phone that would spawn him saying that? In- oh, I've done it again. Good God. Ah. I keep forgetting the which first place. I'm on. What started this? During podcasts, why he didn't want my son around his daughter. So this happened because, okay. People so, were asking questions. People were asking questions like like the smart, intelligent great. people that they are. Go ahead. Why don't you bash around your daughter? You know, people were asking, Chris, why don't you want Sebastian around your daughter? I see people in chat that ask, were asking me all the time, why doesn't Chris want Sebastian around his daughter? There's your answer. Mm-hmm. You know, interesting. So you're telling me that he looks at Sebastian like some sort of predator. Yeah. Wow. But why? Because of what happened to him in California under his supervision or under him and Katie Proudfoot's supervision? That and the fact that he hasn't got the correct help. Uh, in California, he was seeing a doctor by the name of... Yeah, there's something very strange about this interview. They said he hasn't. he's saying he hasn't got the correct help. What does he mean by that? So is he trying to say that Sebastian has been acting inappropriately? Really? Is that what he's saying? I mean... Any of these things about Sebastian have only ever come from Seth. As far as I know, Chris Proudfoot or Katie haven't been out there saying that Sebastian's this or Sebastian's that or Sebastian. It's Seth who's saying these things about Sebastian. That's what sits uncomfortably with me. When I watch this, it sat very uncomfortably with me, I'm afraid. Dr. Franny uh, at Balboa. And she didn't appreciate the fact that I stood up and used a stern voice with her and told her she wasn't doing anything for my son by letting him play with toys and choose what movie or, you know, he gets to watch when he gets out of the thing. That That's that's not helping him. That's not the proper therapy. I'm already researching this. She wasn't. She wasn't. That's the word I'm looking for. She wasn't qualified for that type of therapy. Because that's a different type of therapy for traumatic sexual abuse. And you that's a different type of class. All right. And you're sure of that? Are, are you sure of that? Uh, you know, that she didn't have the creden- credentials to yeah. handle that type of therapy? Yes. All right. Okay. I know that we're doing a little bit backwards. Okay. But I do have a lot of questions that we got to go all the way back a little bit, okay? So I understand that this happened in California. Uh, And we got to dive into it a little bit more so we understand a little bit more of this information. Because you did drop this on Justin. Shout out to Justin on TikTok. And it was uh, shocking, okay? But you did say that in California, while they were, while Sebastian was under Katie Proudfoot's supervision can i interrupt you for go ahead by all means go ahead all right um a lot of people are you know this is is the information that i'm giving is facts it's not me trying to throw punches or well he keeps saying that he's not trying to sling mud he's not trying to throw punches but he actually is i'm sorry but he is somebody needs to talk to this guy and get him off social media and i agree with what ap said they all need to get together and they need to um you know stop all this just needs to uh, honestly it's not doing sebastian any favors you know, but I, I just really feel for Sebastian having his all this dirty washing out there on social media. This is about Sebastian. It's not about Seth, and it's not about Chris, and it's not about Katie. But it's 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 come to this sort of 
I feel really uncomfortable with this personally. Um, and yeah, I think the YouTubers are mocking him because maybe he's got some issues, you know, like, and he's easy to manipulate and he's being manipulated. And um, so, have you just, some, why, why isn't anybody trying to sort of uh, help him? What, where is it? You know, I feel like his mum and dad, where's his mum and dad to tell him, his friends and everything to tell him to stop doing this? What not? But this, this is the third time that something major has happened to my child underneath their watch. And they need to own it. Hmm. They need to own the fact that they have fucked up yet again. And I don't, I'm sitting here being Sebastian's voice. Because right now he doesn't have one until we find him and find out what happened. All right. I've told everybody you're innocent until proven guilty. He is Sebastian's voice, and I see that. If he's set, but he's, he shouldn't be saying all these uh, private things about Sebastian. Not in my eyes, anyway, because Sebastian, a fifty, a fifteen-year-old boy, is going to be absolutely gutted if he if he's alive and well, and he comes back and sees uh, what. You know how his private life's been hung out to dry by his dad, not by the others. It's just, oh, it's it's just sits so uncomfortably with me. This really does. Right. That's just the way the system works. There's nothing I can do about that. That's the way the system works, and that's the way it should work. You're innocent until proven guilty. Mm hmm. Now, I understand that you are, I believe that you are telling the truth. I don't think you have, why would you sit here, go out of your way, uh, not spitting facts, right? So it wouldn't make any sense for you to just go out of your way to just talk wild, suddenly out of nowhere uh, and, and aimlessly in some sort of way. And I don't think what you're saying right now and what you've given to us is aimless or doesn't, I'm just thinking now, looking at him and the way he's looking at Pasquale. Do you think he's looking on YouTube? He's like his counselor of some, you know, he's like using YouTube as a counselor. He's using the YouTubers as someone to talk to and uh, maybe being naive, you know, in the, not thinking like how many people are going to be watching this. That's how it feels, isn't it? It feels like he's sort of almost. Maybe, uh, I think it was you, DMV, said to me, maybe he has got nobody else to talk to, but he should be on the, he should be on to his parents and his friends saying this now. He shouldn't be on to Pascal saying it, you know, sorry, no offence, Pascal, but um, he shouldn't be. Is he using YouTube and the YouTube is some sort of counselling session and it's very naive of him. It's some, oh, honestly. I feel like phoning him up myself and saying, get off YouTube. Have any clout doesn't, isn't backed up with proof, which of course I am very curious about uh, some of these things as well. But what I need to understand though, is that this happened under her super supervision in California. Is that right or wrong? That's right. Was Chris involved in that at all? Because I think that's one thing that a lot of people are very curious about as well. Chris was living with her then. Okay. So who is this kid? Who is this 13-year-old kid, if he was 13, 15, whatever age he was, who did this unthinkable thing to Sebastian? Who is the kid? I don't know his last name. Sheriff wouldn't give me his last name. But why not? California CPS child children under the age of thir 13 and under are actually protected. So there's not, they wouldn't give me any information. They weren't allowed letting me do anything. Um, the only thing they let me do was I asked them if I could contact the school psychologist, if he could sit there and tell the school psychologist the person's name, 
so that the other children that was around him would not become victims as well. Mm. And I went as far as finding out, you know, the parents, from my understanding, the parents told Katie and Chris that their kid picked it up off of watching YouTube. Me personally, I've never seen like that stuff on YouTube. So I, neither have I. So what is he watching on on the tubes that would give him the the disturbing education like that? That's what I'd like to know as well. Huh? So with you learned this with his age, I would have to say that somebody was abusing the child. Huh. It had been probably going on for a while for him to think that it was normal, so he did it to my son. That's why I'm asking about my son having the correct therapy to get him back on track. I mean, he's autistic. He's not mentally as old as he is physically. I mean, he's smart, but, you know, delayed in learning. He's physically 15. Mentally, he's probably 10 or 11, and he's going through adolescence. His body's producing hormones that he has no idea what's about, and... I don't think. Yeah, again, you see, I don't like this, the way he's talking about Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian, where are you? Where is that poor boy? What has happened to Sebastian? I'm going to put the candles on for Sebastian. Oh, I actually haven't lit a candle. I don't tonight. think things are lining up in his brain like they're supposed to because uh, I'm going to light a real he's candle. he's got a 16 chromosomal deletion syndrome and you've got I'm going to light a real candle and I'm going to put some candles on the chat with our special members emojis. And uh, I'm going to put a candle up for this guy as well. He needs a bloody candle. I autism. Understandable. And I, I get it that he's the, the, what he went through is a lot to process, no matter if he had autism or not being a kid, eight, seven or eight or eight years old. That's a lot to process. <laughs> As a kid, uh, I can't. I, I can't even imagine any child going through any of that. But question though, did you know of this said kid? This thir we're going to use thirteen years old. I know Katie Proudfoot said he wasn't thirteen years old, and I get that semantics or technicalities. But I'm just going to call him the thirteen year old kid from this point on. Okay. So, did you know anything about this thirteen year old kid? Oh, don't I <laughs> before you heard about this tragedy and this trauma that was inflicted upon Sebastian. I did not. You had no idea about this child. Okay. So then how did you find out? Because in the interview with Justin on TikTok, okay, you said it made it, you made it sound like you expressed some concerns about Sebastian hanging out with this 13 year old kid while he was about seven or eight years old and you were uncomfortable with it. And then of course this tragedy and this trauma was inflicted. So I'm, I, I want to get some clarity on that. Did you not know about, did you have a strange inkling about this 13 year old or did you find out after the fact from Katie Proudfoot that this trauma was inflicted upon Sebastian? Katie Proudfoot. What's the definition of madness? Doing the same thing over and over again. And I just keep writing on the wrong computer, which is why sometimes the picture goes a bit funny. I've got two computers. <laughs> I've got my computer for me um, emojis and things and so I can read your chat. I've got the computer that I'm showing the video on. And every time I try and put a message on the chat, I use the wrong uh, uh, keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh god but i just keep doing it who at that time was katie Payne. i found out from her she says she had contacted cps on the other family therefore i found out from her and cps spoke to me and that's when i started dealing with cps and the sheriff's department mm. Yeah, you know, I I felt it was unfair as well to blame Katie completely for this because you know I, I'm sure like when not only friends but your family if they bring their kids round, uh, don't matter if there's a, a an age difference between them a five year age difference, you know uh, uh, 
an eight-year-old boy. He'd like to play on games with a 13-year-old boy. Of course he would, because that 13-year-old boy will know how to do the video game better than him be able to show him how to do it. Katie had no reason to know that um, this boy was going to abuse Sebastian. She didn't know that he was going to do that. And, it, and then it happened, and she went to the Child Protection Services. You know, it's. I think there's probably loads of times, if you think about your own families and friends, how many times with your kids, you know, that maybe your um, cousins come round or your uh, niece or nephew and they brought the kids and one of the kids is older and they go off with them and go on to the, the, the PlayStation or the Xbox or whatever. I don't see how Katie could have known that. And as soon as she did find out about it, she was straight to the Child Protection Services. So I, I think it's really unfair uh, to think that Katie could have stopped that. I think it was just a normal thing. that a 30, No, I'm trying to think about my son. I think there's loads of times probably we've been somewhere, like with my family maybe or friends, and... Um, and he's been sort of playing games with an older boy or whatever. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Me, me, me and Katie used to communicate a lot more than we do now. We're going to talk about that in a second. But real quick, as soon as you found... Oh, I've done it again. Believe it or not. I have absolutely now, done it again. About this tragedy that happened to Sebastian at seven or eight years old oh, in God. California. What did you do? I immediately contacted the sheriff's department. I wanted okay. to find out what was going to happen to the child. Okay. I wanted to if, you know, what they were going to do to protect my son, protect this child that more than likely has been a victim already. And what they were going to do to prevent it. And I don't think the Sheriff's Department did anything. Another time that the law has failed our children. Because mm -mm -mm. I know that you said on the interview as well that you couldn't do anything because of the state, because the state that you're in, because of the, of the state of California, that you couldn't press charges on this 13 year old kid. Can you explain to me why you couldn't press charges on this kid? He just committed a crime allegedly. So. Why couldn't you press charges on this 13 year old because, kid? Because of his age. 13. They won't press charges against a 13 year old for that. What was told to me by the sheriff's department? You know, my son got upset because I didn't tell him I knew. Uh, that his mom hadn't told me and he got upset one day and I was like son I do know and if you ever want to talk to me about it you can but at the same point in time I was trying to take care of things on my end you know I get it I fully get it I, 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 I think mean, it's crazy to me that you couldn't do anything be I, I i it it doesn't make any I, I don't get it i mean i don't live in california in california and i don't know the you know the the law out there yeah. but i i am still very girl. shocked what were you saying i said but you wear la gear all the time <laughs> i do <laughs> i really do i really really do uh maybe i'm you know i'm trying to manifest something you feel me um but Careful. still, right. But still, I am quite curious as to why I, that seems so odd to me that you couldn't do anything in the state of California when a crime was committed against your son during that time. It still does blow my mind. But when you found out, going back to it, when you found out from Katie Proudfoot at that time, uh, can you tell me where was your mindset? How did that feel? I really don't want to state that in public. 
Okay. Fair That's enough. My big he just had his innocence taken from him. I it took me it took me a minute to digest and it took me a minute to figure out the proper way to go about it instead of you know someone just hurt my my baby. So of course I get that. And I know that you were I mean when you talked about it the other day um we all saw that emotion. We all know. And I think we also second that emotion as well. If we were in those shoes as well, we would be just as shocked. There's no apology for my behavior. Um, I got upset. I was mad. I'm, I'm exhausted. And it takes a while for me to get to that point. But I, First of all, I don't like people trying to hold something over my head. Yeah, so something that you know happened under their watch, and he needs help. And uh, Seth is definitely here looking uh, on Pascal like his counselor or someone to chat to, or uh, he, you know, he really should be phoning the Samaritans or something like that instead of phoning uh, or calling in on um, these YouTube channels. It's not going to be good for him. And, you know, we're finally getting him to help him. It's late. And now I got to find him. Right. You are absolutely right. So then you, tell me then, because I feel like you suddenly out of nowhere and understandably, I feel Anyway, I'm going to stop that. If you want to see the rest of the interview, you can go to uh, Pascal's channel. Of course, I don't want to take all his... Uh, am I subscribed? I thought I was, but... Uh, yes, I am. I am subscribed. I thought I was. I like his video. Uh, but really, um, as far as Seth's concerned, I wish somebody would, you know take Seth under the wing and stop him from doing all these things. I don't think it's going to be good for him. But, um, yeah, I think you're right, Bridget. He goes home to an empty house. I mean, Katie and Chris, they have got each other. They have got each other. And, you know, I think that's the reason why Katie has gone off to be with Chris. She doesn't want to go home to a house on her own either, remember. And also, uh, everybody knows where she lives. Everybody hates her. So she's not going to be want to be in her house on her own either. But she can talk to Chris. She doesn't have to phone up YouTube channels and or and talk to them. And I know it's Seth out perhaps hasn't got anyone to talk to, but he has got his parents. What about his friend Jaden and the people that all the people that are helping him with the with the search and that there must be somebody else he can talk to without getting in touch with all these YouTube channels all the time. Um, and dive, every time he phones a YouTube channel or comes on, he reveals another embarrassing bit of information about Sebastian. And that's not good for Sebastian in my eyes. You know, it's like just not good. So somebody, yeah, please, uh, Seth, if he's watching this, but uh, which he may well be because he's obviously watching YouTube channels. Uh, you know, try to uh, not... Um, you know, don't ring these YouTube channels. Just phone. Them. I'm trying to think. What you phone? Phone a uh, you know a helpline or something. There must be somebody. Surely the police have assigned someone to him. This is the father of a missing boy. Don't the police assign somebody to look after them like they do in the UK? Now he's saying that the police won't speak to him now. Whether the police have got annoyed with him because he has been on these YouTube channels. But that then they should be helping him, shouldn't they? Very strange, very strange. Uh, so, yeah, um, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so we're praying for Sebastian. We've lit our candles for Sebastian tonight. Um, 
and for Seth and for Katie and Chris, really, because at the end of the day, if they are innocent, they are parents that have lost the, a child as well. So we, we don't know what's happened to Sebastian. Whatever has happened, if some foul play has happened or something untoward has happened to him, it might be somebody completely nothing to do with any of the parents, you know, or he could have had an accident or could have hidden somewhere. You know, there's so many sort of possibilities. I just hope the police can unravel it soon and uh, some, you know, some some resolution in this awful case that's what i just hope for that's what we all hope for i'm sure now i'm trying to do me candles so i am gonna go i want to say thank you to people devon who became a new member and also gifted five vicky marie chats memberships and i want to thank vicky marie chats who also gifted five Vicky Marie memberships. So there you go. There's uh, 11 new members. I'm going to check on my emojis and see if I can get, uh, for, for the next time we're live, try and get the other emojis up um, that uh, DMV sent that out. I was only, a, you know, you're right, you have to have so many members. And each time you get the next block of members, you it, releases and you know another more spaces for emojis so what i want to say before i finish is thank you to everyone for subscribing for liking don't forget to like on the way out if you didn't like on the way in um thank you uh if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing because that's completely free and um it really helps me out also, uh, a special thank you to members, of course. It'll be, we'll soon be Thursday and it'll be members live again. And, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who's bought me a coffee, uh, bought me a coffee, uh, I should say, sent a super sticker, etc. Any way you've supported my channel, thank you so much. And I'll see you really soon in the next video. Remember to live and love wisely and carefully. And until then, always, may your God go with you. Night, night.